The following program is brought to you by Verdoliac Law Group, fighting insurance companies since 1963, and by TickSplits.com, the official ticket provider for BearsBarroom.com. It's an exciting time to be a Chicago Bear. Definitely have some, some dogs. I'm looking forward to getting out there with them dogs. What about the five that you'll see on Sunday? I know those five guys can't block a real match. One word that just continues to keep coming up with with Ryan and myself is, is the word obsession. Being obsessed. There's going to be accountability as well, and I think that's key. Obsess. Bar flies unite. Bar flies arise. Obsess. It's the Sunday bar. Tailgate show and the bar flies are alive. Bar flies unite. Obsessed. Bar flies arise. Being obsessed. It's the Sunday bar fly tailgate show and the bar flies are Being alive. Obsessed. Game day, the bears are ready to roll, and so are the guys. It's a show to get you wise, no lies. Educating bar flies, realize that Bobby dropping bombs is a double A. Be flipping burgers while the Diddy be wanting hot roast. First he's gone, now he's back. Where does he go? And Nicky Mirage, who disappears like David Blaine on the show. Last but not least, Southwest Indiana's finest. Calling all the angels, now he's calling BG Highness. Cheer, Bobby Diddy, Nicky, Mr. Double A. Talking the bears to get you ready on the bar fly tail flies unite. Barflies arise. It's the Sunday barfly tailgate show when the barflies are alive. Barflies unite. Barflies arise. It's the Sunday barfly tailgate show when the barflies are alive. Barflies unite. Barflies arise. It's the Sunday barfly tailgate show when the barflies are I'm not a big talker. I, I like to go out and use my actions to speak, you know, and um, when I get out there and get on the field, uh, you can probably sense what's going to happen. I want to win. Being obsessed. I know those five guys can't block a real mat. Yo, yo. Being obsessed. The Barfly Tailgate Show. Being obsessed. Begins now. Being obsessed. Barfly, the name given to followers of At Bear's Bar Room, loyal, diehard family members of the show who will wolfpack someone when needed. Here we go, Barflies. We're back with another Barfly tailgate show. It's live. It's done by Barflies. Four Barflies and all the other bear fans out there. What's up, Barflies? We're back at full strength today on the Tailgate Show with everyone back and together from their trips to Chicago. You know, this past weekend is one we've been waiting for since since uh, 2010. The Chicago Bears have clinched the division, took their rightful spot on the throne as the Kings of the North. You know, we got all the dudes in today. My name is Bobby Phelan. I'm back in action this morning after a great victory weekend in Chicago where we you know, straight partied all weekend with all kinds of bar flies and bear fans from all over the place. I'm joined by none other than the Flygate crew. We're ready to finish this season strong and hopefully carry two more victories into the postseason. Hey, hey, my boy, back from beating the down, you know, the the bagging people, the little baggers at the local jewel and ready to kick it. You know, great, great meeting you this weekend, bro. <laughs> you know, if you guys haven't seen yet, this dude really brought it. Represented the barroom this weekend, uh, Saturday night, with a little Saturday night throwdown at Bill's Bar and Burgers in Chicago. Hey, hey, what's up, brother? Yo, yo, what's up? How's it going, everybody? Uh, just still getting my voice back, to be honest. I gave my voice uh, to the Bears on Sunday, and I'm still getting it back. So, um, But what a win, what a weekend, and uh, it's just cool to be back talking to everybody. Fuck yeah, man. B Dids, NFC North champions. How you feeling going into that weekend, man? It's still unbelievable, man. It's just like it's like a dream, man. I'm just excited. Excited to go forward and uh let's bear down, baby. Fuck yeah. The Gaines report. Tyler Ellis, always ready for an early morning throwdown. This dude's probably already been in the gym twice this morning, you know, he's putting about seven miles on the pavement. Gaines, what up, dude? Hey yo, what's going on, Bobby? What's up, Bear fans? My fellow bar flies, it's good to have everybody back on the show together. It's a champion. We got a championship team we're about to watch tomorrow. But, you know, we, we, we want that real championship. And we're going for the NFC title. So let's go. 
championship. The badge man, Ryan Badgley, top notch dude, always bringing fire, you know, filling in for me last week and all these times so I can just go drink and fucking be obnoxious. Badge, thanks again for covering down, dude. How's things? Oh, man, chilling, man. Excited. NFC North Division champs, pumped. You know, I think the sky is the limit. Uh, you know, Eldo said it, I think on a hundred proof, he, he mentioned those two words, super bowl, man, it, things are looking good. If we continue to group together, damn, what up everybody? Hell yeah, man. And finally we got air Jer, the pony express, the Bronco boy. The pony has now become a full grown fucking horse after his birthday yesterday. <laughs> Jer, <laughs> Jer, I'm sure you're hurting a little bit, man. How was last night? And you know, happy oh. birthday and congrats, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The <laughs> pony's here. He had to put a couple of shots down last night. It was, it was one of them things. And let's roll. We were ready for, we were on to San Francisco and we're going to bury one more demon this weekend. That's right. Damn straight. All right, well, let's jump right into this, guys. Let's get this thing started. Uh, I mean, let's start it off like we should with a little congratulations. Congrats to our Chicago Bears for locking up the division, not only securing the North, but doing so in week 15. Uh, congrats to you guys and everyone in the bar room, the bar flies who put so much dedication into this team, you know, weekly, yearly. And I mean, it's been a suffering spree. You know, we've been suffering for some time and now uh, the excitement's real. You know, the Things have changed. I mean, this Packer game, it, there was like something in the air in Chicago, man. More so than I think that I've ever seen, um, you know, from being there, man. And it's like everybody around town sporting Bears attire now. Like the Bear Downs ring throughout the streets. Uh, Matt Nagy has really rekindled the love for this team and the passion uh, that is Chicago football. Um, I'd have to say that, you know, it's been – Pretty lackluster since Lovey, man. Uh, he's not only done, you know, done it with a revamped offense and attack personnel that he's brought in, but he's given Victor Reigns and, in, in my opinion, allowed the city to keep their identity as as being monsters, man, and just you know living off of that defense. Hey, hey, let's let's start this thing off with you, man. Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he's been known to put us away, whether late in the game or early on. Uh, he even said it himself, we always went to Chicago. Uh, Chicago has pretty much been a layup for this dude over the years, but not Sunday, man. This dude's body language and overall demeanor showed that, you know, he just, he couldn't do anything. He was frustrated and just getting beat down, uh, had a ton of overthrows and misses. Uh, what do you think of his gameplay on Sunday, dude? Well, you know, I mean, I, I think that he is a guy that is the ultimate arrogant quarterback he he you know we have been uh you know the little brother in a sense uh of of him you know as a team and you know the guy the guy is just complete walking talking arrogance and yeah he just you know this was a day where the team and i think the city and the fans just kind of were like you know what no more like we're not we're not that team anymore we're not going to get pushed around we're not gonna get you know shit on by you and you know it, it he was shook i mean honestly he was shook and you know you, you know there's lots of uh you know built-in excuses which he's uh very quick to bring up whether it's his depleted offensive line or his um you know wide receiver uh issues or this that and the other but at the end of the day we beat him and it's you know he 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 still was you know he still was him he had his he had his opportunities there were open throws he's just missing guys and i don't was, know i don't definitely. know if he's i don't know if he's something's wrong with him necessarily but i do have this sense about the packers this year that there is not any kind of team aspect to them they don't feel like a unified front um, right. you know and and this is a team that fired their coach in midseason so so it doesn't really surprise you that that's the case um and he certainly doesn't galvanize anybody when he gets knocked down nobody rushes over to help him up yeah. you know he he's always off to him, himself pointing at people and this that and the other and and uh you know i just watched that danny trevathan mic'd up thing <laughs> And I mean, they had this guy, man. They had this guy's number. They knew he, Trevathan was calling out every play before it happened. He was, 
you know, oh, look at this. When he puts his hand on his hip, you know, that means he's sending the running back this way. I mean, they had this guy measured. And and you know what? They listened to him when he made that cornball speech about go to Chicago, a place we've won many times. And these guys took it personal and and they they put it on him and they want and, and you know, and, and Leonard Floyd and all these guys, they put it on him. And, you know, but at the end of the day, he was still that evil zombie MF, you know that came so close to to doing what he does, but we won. At the end of the yeah. day, we killed him. Killed Agreed. the monster. I mean, we I, I think so too. I mean, you made like really good points, man. Their their lack of team chemistry is is ridiculous. I mean you could watch it. Um you've seen it in a couple of the games prior to ours where like a receiver will make a big catch and nobody celebrates with them. You know what I mean? There's no like, uh, they don't get fired up for each other. There's no real team chemistry. Like you said, like, helping up the quarterback or all, like, you know, getting to the ball and celebrating. Um, I think, like, I think he's, like, really at a point to where he – people just don't want to follow him. You know what I mean? And, like, he's he's made this divide in that locker room. Um, so you that just sounds like to a- we've dealt with. Well, yeah, now you just signed him to a fucking $100 million deal. You, now you've got to rebuild around him? I mean, you're, you're, you're the Green Bay front office now, and you're like, shit, man, like th- these guys aren't playing together. They're not playing around him, and now this is what you have going forward if, if, if you're a moron fucking Packer? Like, uh, to me, that contract now at this point after the season and looking at this team and the way they've played – Man, that looks even worse than it did the day he signed it at 35 years old. Yep, yep. there ain't no there ain't no Bose he- headphones that'll cancel out that noise. Well, no <laughs> doubt. But I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and say it was because of Rogers' poor performance, though. We made him have a poor performance. Like guys like oh, yeah. Mc, McManus and Jackson, man, came up huge. A, you showed that picture how close that was, that Hail Mary. Like you could tell these guys really studied this week and knew where to be. You know, defensively, it was, it was and a also, great performance. I mean, we gave him a shot to come back in with Cohen on that step out. I mean, we'll talk about that stuff, but like the fumble, the the punt uh, fake. I mean, we gave them chances to come back in, and we let we basically allowed them to tie that game. Um, yep. We got away. We got away with it in the Rams game. Like, I, if you turn, if you give the ball to the Rams, that offense three additional times with turnovers, you do not deserve to win that game. Hundred percent, hands down. You don't give a team like the Rams three turnovers and think that you're going to walk out of there with that victory. But I mean, we did, and I think that kind of has allowed uh, Coach Nagy and has allowed these guys to to call some of these plays because of the the belief that they have in this defense. That you know what, like whatever, let's let's give it a shot and see what happens because our defense will pull us out of the shit if if they need to. Well, um, it's- it's interesting because it's now the opposite. Whereas, you know, you had the previous regime was conservative and, and wanted to, you know, stay in the game. And because of the defense, you know, we had a top 10 defense last year. So the, the thought process as was, you know, stay in the game, don't get down, don't turn the ball over. Whereas Nagy sees it as we have a great defense. So that allows us to take the chances and right. be aggressive um, so it's just an interesting departure, but Diddy's right. I mean, that the the we beat them, and yeah. and that's a great call out. Sherrick McManus, what it's I mean, that's that's his best performance as a Bear, yeah. hands down. So Without that was question. that was just cool, you know. And and <clears throat> you know, at the end of the day, it's not all about Rogers. And I think this team, the Packer team, is sick of this idea that this is the Aaron Rodgers show, that everything good happens because of him and everything bad happens because yeah. of somebody else. And they're tired of that, you know, LeBron blames, um, you know, uh, mentality where it's just like at the end of the game, if they lose, it's let's talk about Aaron Rodgers injuries. Let's talk about depleted wide receiver core. Let's talk about guys running the wrong routes, this, that, and the other. And then if he wins, it's, oh, look at Mr. Championship belt. Look at Mr. You know, um, Discount everything. double check. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, and, you took and, it, and, man. And they're, <laughs> they're, you know, they're sick of it. You know, there's there, and and the fan base is sick of him, too, which is kind of crazy. Like those, you know, it's like you 
you greedy MFs. <laughs> yeah. But you, you, I mean, you look at you look at this organization though, you you look at the quarterbacks they've had, right? So you look at Favre. He got he he won one Super Bowl. Rodgers is headed down that same path and now he's mid 30s and they're, you know, one of the bottom teams in the division right now. So the fan base is like, man, we've had two quarterbacks over the last, you know, 20 plus years that we should have won multiple Super Bowls and didn't. So the fan base is like, come on, what what is this front office not doing that's going to make us turn this around, you know? It's Don't great to see it. It's great seeing a dumpster fire in entitlement I town. I love it. I love Don't. it. Burn the Don't, you get down. The feeling, Don't you get the feeling like they are going down a path that we went with a certain quarterback from this area, Jay Cutler? Doesn't that feel? Oh, I do, man. I mean, well, I can tell you what I can tell you what the front office is doing. They're losing to Ryan Pace. <laughs> That's what they're doing. They, they lost do is Kyle Fuller. Lose, 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 lose no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they lose. I mean, they, they you know, that, and All right, let's, let's so keep this thing it. going though. Let's see. I mean, you're right. I'm mean, we've had year after year. And even though the Vikings took it last year, it still kind of feels like we've been dealing with Rogers every year. And he's always, you know, always been a threat, man. And this is, I would probably say, I mean, it, as long as, as far as I can remember, this is really only the second year where they've been eliminated by week 15, um, that I can remember where they didn't have a chance to even get in there. Um, Gaines, what do you think about the way this thing played out where we could take the North by literally taking down the little bitch-ass prince, you know, that's pretty much held on to it for so long? I'm listening to you guys talk about it, and I'm like, man, fuck they feelings, man. I don't care anything about that. Everything that they – everything, <laughs> all those narratives, no, we, no one gave us any second thoughts when we were going through those same things. When Jamarcus Webb was protecting the Cutler's blind side, when we had Devin Hester as our number one receiver and we still went to the NFC um, championship game. No one gave – we had um, a, yeah. role, a role we should do. No one gave a damn about our lack of receivers. I don't want to hear yeah. any of that stuff, man. Hell no. <laughs> did, he just, did, did he just say that we beat them? But let's keep let, – let, let me slow down. Let's slow down. Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> 42 attempts. Mitch Trubisky, 28 attempts. You see what yeah. I'm saying? It's like the fact that Jones went out early was like a super blessing, but they had nothing. There was nothing. All they had was the flats. Aaron Rodgers, for the last 10 years, he um he's a good quarterback. He can find a defense mistakes. Where our defense is at right now, we are limiting those holes. All they have is the flat, and they're hoping to make people miss. It's either the flat or they're going to try to beat us deep, which old man Rogers overthrew like six, six of them. Like you said, Bobby, <laughs> yeah. it, was, it, it was, it was amazing. It was a turning of the damn tide. And that's why I knew we we're going to beat the shit out of them. Excuse my language. Last week, you just said it. The Rams, which is a way more potent offense than the Packers are. The fact that our defense, the fact that we turned the ball over that many times and they got zero, damn it, almost no touchdowns out of it. That gave us a huge boost. The fact that Rogers could not climb the pocket, through the A gap when the outside D gap um when the D gap blitz came was huge. Yeah, this but the, but if you listen to people, yeah, that ain't that ain't it's, because it's of our job. defense. It's a phenomenal job by our coaches to prepare our players to um for this matchup. When Rogers for for Rogers to come in and if you go back to A's point, the lack of team unity. This all started when they cut Jordy Nelson without telling them. You cut the man's best receiver, then tell him. So that was the that was the kind of downhill that I loved it. I, any type yeah. of turmoil, I love that crap because you know what he he is he is he had a sense of entitlement. He thought he was going to come in here and this was what was going to be. But no, this is a different era. This is the, this is the next level of a different type of team. And so the yeah. fact that we could, the fact that we didn't make that many mistakes on defense. Our defense allows our offense to get more reps, man, and it's, it's beautiful to watch. But damn anything about Aaron Rodgers and those punk ass Packers, man, because we've been we went, we've been in this bottom cellar for too long, and we but we're together. It's not one man saying, "Okay, I'm gonna do this by myself." It's it's not Aaron Rodgers versus one man. It's not Aaron Rodgers versus Mitch. It's not Aaron Rodgers versus Mac. It's everybody. You see what I'm saying? It is, like, isn't it crazy how like uh, how these teams and like the way that they act kind of their fans start to act that way? Like Packers fans have a sense of entitlement, right? I think they do. I'm pretty sure most of you guys think they do. 
damn, last year when we were getting beat down, we Bears fans were fucking pissed. You know, we were just the fucking on edge Firefox fucking pissed off fans. Now this year, like, there's all this excitement and celebration around the team, and now we're all like a bunch of giddy fucking dancing kids at some school dance and shit. You know, but we recognize, but we recognize it and we appreciate it. it's two different things. Last year we lost like six games by less than three points. We were we were on the cusp of something good. We've been waiting for our office to show up for the, for the, the last decade. And right. we have a coach. We have a coach who just trusts our defense. I think that's that's a great point, Gaines, that you bring up that we lost so many close games. But the thing about last year was even though we were in close games, I never felt like we were in those games. Like those exactly. close exactly. those close games still felt like beatdowns. Like, true, true. Just, but you gotta remember, like, you gotta remember, but you, that, you, what I'm that, saying is that what a difference a year makes because true. this team, I feel like we're never out of it, which is correct, which is crazy. And it goes back to the game that you guys went to, the Giants game. We're never out of the game, and that's a strange feeling as a Bears fan because, as we've brought up on this show before, previous Bears teams would go down by 10 points in the first quarter and you just felt like it was over like there was no shot and people people want to bring up the 2006 team that team got lucky a whole hell of a lot and <laughs> and even though the defense was very good and was scoring points and doing all these things they got lucky and it felt lucky like Rex Grossman's success felt like luck Mitch Trubisky's success does not feel like luck. It feels like the culmination of the execution that he's mm-hmm. supposed to be doing. And, and it feels like, oh, no, this is the plan, and now the plan is working. And that's I think, is the big difference between this team and the 2016. Is that I, I felt like the 2016 was very fluky and – and, you know, it was like, wait, wait, the Bears? Like, the Bears are in the Super Bowl? The Bears could be in the Super Bowl? This team, it feels like, no, no, we are building. This is foundational. You know, we're stacking the, the things that are needed to mm-hmm. to be a team that is in the conversation every single year. And we're Amen. in every damn game, even when they go down. And I'll tell you what, in the stadium, when, when they tied it up, it you know, the air was taken out. I'm not going to lie. But we came back. And, and because there was an underlying belief and even my, you know, even I sat back down and everybody sat down and it was just like, uh, you know, there was that feeling of like, here we go again. But a lot of people in the crowd and Phil talked about it too, myself included, was just like, no, what? No, screw that. Yeah. I, I didn't feel like, yeah. and it's time to get loud again. And it's time to say, no, 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 we're not, this isn't, this isn't here we go again. Get the damn air yeah. raid siren going. We're yeah. on our damn feet. And we're back in this game. And, and, and what's the difference? And, what, and what's the difference? And what's the difference between this game and last game? And the Giants game, we talked about it. And, um, and we almost came back. But, and we did come back. But the difference was Mitch, bro. Mitch being there changes everything, regardless of how he's playing. He showed us that even in the Rams game when he didn't play well. And the fact that Mitch was on his damn money this game, how could you not have confidence? Everything the damn Packers got, man, we, were, we kept them in a the game. What if we were on? What if we were firing on all cylinders? Well, this should have been a blowout. This should have been a damn blowout. We have, we look look how look at our punting. We did we actually did our thing on all three phases. Mega punt for Miami did his damn thing. Josh Bellamy did an outstanding job grounding those punts at the one two yard line each time. Yeah. Like it was it was completely on all aspects a different team, yo. We need to understand this is fucking Mitch's division now. We're the division champs. And a year later, when a damn a, a punk ass co- a, a punk ass coach that say he should take, should take credit, who didn't want to play Mitch, no, now Mitch a year later is the division winning quarterback. Damn straight. All right, all right, let's stay with this game, and then we'll we'll move on to all that other stuff because we just kind of went fucking touched on every topic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's right uh, let's go let's go back to something uh, Gaines had mentioned with uh, Aaron Jones going out. Um, Diddy, I know last week you had a little piece uh, on the tailgate show there about uh, about Aaron Jones, um, but obviously we're not celebrating this dude's injury. Let's not get fucking stupid about it. But uh, how do you think him going down affected this game, and uh, and if it swung, you know, swung the pendulum our way or not? I think it definitely did. Um, I just think four attempts for eight yards. Maybe he just thought to himself, "Man, I don't want to get punk like Gurley did and took himself out." You know, what I mean, because we don't, we're not giving the running backs any 
<laughs> anything right now. People, they, well, he's, scared, he's, on, he's on the IR now. He's on the IR I'm, I'm now playing, with the season. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I know, I know. But, but uh, I, I think it was it was huge, man. I mean, the kid was playing really well coming into the game, and anytime you can stop a running back that's that's playing that well, it's it's huge for you. For you, it makes you it makes the opposing offense one dimensional. Man, uh, I I, th- I think it was a uh, really big deal to, sh- to shut him down the way we did, and unfortunately, he, I, you never wish injury on anybody. But him going out absolutely gave us an advantage. Yeah, and I think he's he holds a little different skill set than Gurley, even though he's not obviously anywhere close to Gurley. But you know, Gurley's that power type, uh, explosive dude, and he's kind of more of a shifty um, kind of sneak. He sneaks in those yardage, you know, that yardage a lot. They get um, they get away with average running backs having a lot of success just because of Rodgers too. They can yeah. they, they've they've been able to plug whoever they want in and get a little play with them. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, mainly because of Rodgers and their receivers. And I honestly like last year I started to do it, but I st- it got too there was way too much to track. But um, the, towards the left hash mark or towards towards the left sidelines, and Rodgers started to roll right. Like one of them would adjust and and turn it into a slant across the middle, and that thing would end up going for big yardage. Um, but I, mean, I, really... still, I think if you look at it, they're still doing that. He's not finding them though, or he was a few times. Great. He, he had he had guys underneath, and he had guys who came and sat down, you know, in different spots, and he went for the deep ball. Yeah, I think that's more of that that chemistry thing that you brought up earlier, AA, where he doesn't know where guys are going to go now like he used to. No, well, losing know, Jordan, losing yeah. Jordy was was a huge loss for them. I mean, those yeah. guys were on the same page like crazy. But yo, but damn on that running game, damn, damn on that, damn on that, man. But when but when he comes back with a with a miracle hail mary, oh, he's the fucking best, Aaron Rodgers. I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> I think Dude, from the, these guys from, been gone. These guys agree. been gone. It's one, you know, one or the other, man. Credit you to know, the next defense too, man. Oh, I mean, on that last drop, he stood in that pocket forever, and there was nobody open, nobody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that—that's where Leonard Floyd gets his sack and throws him on his ass backwards. It's because those DBs had it on fucking lockdown. Well, remember they used to always get that call too on the damn um, on the offsides. Rogers, he was always good for that. A couple plays a game, but. You know, it's that now it's a dead ball. Jared, what about you, man? Let's go back to Jones. You think Jones uh, could have turned the tables on this game, or not a chance? We would have just shut him down too, and it would have been one less thing people would be talking about. Honestly, I don't think it mattered. I mean, I I think that he's a better receiving back out of the backfield than the, yeah, was. Who's the other kid? I can't even think of his name. Paul Williams. Yeah, that dude. He came in better, and had a nice back. game, though. Williams. Yeah, but you know, I mean, nice it, not ball, enough to put it. 55 yards. He had that 10 yard. The reason why he's a number two back, but our defense wasn't giving it up. They're like, nope, not not today. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the defense they would they, I mean, they did what they had to do. I mean, Badge, we got a lot of pressure this past week and stunts and some. That weren't even stunts. They just the defensive lineman just didn't know who to block. There's yeah. two people coming, one inside, one outside, and he just got confused. Their uh, first you, drive of the game, man, set the tone. Yeah. Did you see us getting to Rogers like this on Sunday, or did you think it was going to be a little more uh, difficult to get all this pressure? You know, I think we we each week, you know, there or maybe not each week, but a lot of weeks in the season, we talked about offensive linemen for different teams being being hurt, and and all of us saying. Yeah, this is the week, man. This is the week. We got to step up. And, you know, uh, with um, Bak- was it Bakhtiari with, with Balaga, with Balaga being out, mm-hmm. um, I just think they, they, they turned up a different gear. You saw it, you know, right off the bat. They, they're third and one, you know, inside the 20. And you got Mac lined up and Roquan coming from that linebacker spot. And, uh, uh, Bakhtiari not knowing what to do. You know what I mean? And that's a veteran alignment. Shit, who do I go after? No help yeah. for him at all. Yeah. And Roquan makes Rogers move. Khalil cleans it up. And I think that was the start of, you know, a great day for, I mean, Floyd, I'm rocking the Floyd t-shirt today, man. Two sacks, you know, he was in there quite a bit. You know, that last one where, you know, he's pointing at his wrist like it's our time. He gave the discount double check, you know. Yeah, he did. 
I mean, huge, huge, a great performance from our D line, our linebacker. I mean, it was just a great day, man. Sherrick McManus as well. Like, damn, man, we balled out. Yeah, I mean, dude, yeah. think about this. Uh, sticking with you, Badge, we got 16 players on this team with a sack. Yeah, dude. 16. 16 players on this defense have had a sack this year. Insane. 16, 16 dudes, man, have yeah. got a sack recorded this year. Um, I just think that that's I'm, it's crazy how it's not. Although I know, you know, Max got 12 5 and, and whatever, but the chemistry and just like the, the overall, like you don't you don't know where the hell they're coming from uh, type deal getting after. It's got to just be a, a mind fuck for the offensive coordinator, man. It has to be, man. Cause I mean, you, you, you saw Callahan, he was coming. McManus was coming. They're bringing Amos. They're bringing Jackson, Dion Bush, shit, DeAndre Houston Carson. <laughs> Everybody's getting a shot to get on that field. And that's what you don't see a lot from other teams in this league is they don't have that depth where, you know, McManus before he had to, to start, he had his own freaking package, man, where he would come on the field basically just to blitz. And and teams were having, you know, they'd see him come out so they know he's out there, but they didn't have a clue where he was coming from. Yeah. Yeah, there was even a little talk after um, after Callahan went down and, and Sherrick came in where they asked if uh, – I think they asked Eddie Jackson, um, basically like, how does this change up? You know, the way you guys play and, and the calls back and forth from, from him to you. And he's like, it really doesn't change up much. He's like, yeah, we need to get more on the same page with our, with our signals and how we tell each other things He's like, cause I guess Callahan and Jackson were good with like a look or a hand signal was like, yo, this is what I'm doing. Then that means that's what you're doing. Um, but he said, you know, we got to change that up or, or figure that piece out a little bit. But the way Vic has not practice and and roll through everything it's like it's it's just next man up and let's go i mean there's not a big uh change in in the in how things are run absolutely man there there really isn't i mean you 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 think about you know mcmanus having to step in and now with jackson out which we'll get into you're going to see that you know kind of rear its head again this week and, and, and next week possibly, you know? So, yeah. um, you know, I'd rather see these guys, Lynch, Jackson, that are, you know, nursing some, yo, chill these two weeks. We got you, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do our part, but man, when the playoffs roll around, boom, it's on. Yeah. Well, it's think- also, it, 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 you have, right. have to give Pace a lot of credit too, because you, mm-hmm. you know, he's going and talking to these coaches and finding out the players that fit. I mean, yep. He's built. I looked at statistics from last season. We were kind of close to the the 2013 49ers, believe it or not, and that was Vic's mar- like trademark defense. And now we add Mac and Roquan to that, and this this is the product we have. They're they're bringing in the guys that fit Fangio's system, and Vic's just ha- Vic's just having a field day with it. Yeah, definitely. Well, and the other De- thing is that when guys come in, they're coming in to a defense that has Khalil Mack on it. They're coming into a defense that has Akeem Hicks playing the way that he's playing. They're coming in to, you know, a defense that has guys, so they don't have to. They don't. They don't necessarily have to make a play. They just have to stay in the their lanes, do their job, and it's going to work out the way it's going to work out. Which is, it's a, it's a kind of a mirror of the offense to a certain degree because, you know, uh, Bobby brings up sixteen guys have sacks. Well, on the offense. There's not, you know, there's not one 1,500-yard receiver. There's not one, you know, uh, no, there's guy that's... Actually, actually, there's 16 players with touchdowns. Right. <laughs> so so you look at that, how, how... And I think that's a credit to Ryan Pace for the depth of this team. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's, it's also a credit to Matt Nagy because he is involving every 50, all 53 people. And, and you hear these guys talk about how they know they have a role. They know what their role is. They know they're going to get a shot to do something and they all want to be a part of it. And, and as was talked about on, on hundred proof, you know, Shane talked about it, it. Winning is the elixir. And, and, and what happens is, is that when you start winning, everybody wants to be out on that field, you know, uh, yep. suddenly the, the, the injuries don't hurt as much, you know, when you can yeah. go out and be a part of a win. But I think it, you know, it goes to show you, you know, like look, look at, uh, Iggy flying around on special teams and Josh Bellamy having this great role 
and Irving coming in and, you know, and stepping up and DeAndre Houston Carson getting, you know, a couple plays here and there and, and, and being fine. And, you know, and we'll get to this later, but Deion Bush yeah. coming in, you know, you just, you, when, when guys come in in a backup role, again, we don't feel that like, who the fuck is this guy feeling? We feel like, okay, here's another guy and, and let's, let's go. One thing yeah. that can't get one thing that can't, one thing that can't get lost real quick, Bob, is the fact that Kyle Fuller earning that money. Because if the, the pass rush doesn't matter if your number one or not and the number two wide receiver are already open, and that's why Rodgers even went at McManus. And big credit to him for being our special teams captain for over the last some odd years, and to get that opportunity and make a, 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 one of the best, best plays of his career, like you guys were talking about earlier. But Kyle Fuller, the pass rush doesn't matter if guys are open. So the fact that do you guys remember we used to play 15 yards off the damn ball? That used to be the most annoying crap in the world. So the fact that Vic actually trust his DBs, we can actually send these guys because the blitz doesn't. None of these things matter if we can't if we can't do the basic principles of football, which is having your man locked up and give you give you only give him the inside shoulder and we're stopping the yak, the yards after the catch, guys yeah. catch the ball and they're painful. Yeah. Well, you got guys. Huge, yeah. Guys can make these huge play. tackles. Yeah, that was a huge play on Devontae Adams runs that drag route late in the third, I think, where he comes across and we almost trip over each other, but Mukamara gets him by an ankle and drops him. Changed the whole that changed that whole drive. I mean they end up yeah. kicking a field goal, I think. Now years back, years back, what happens there? Yeah, he he's breaks gone. it and he's oh, gone. He breaks it, he's gone. Yeah, he's yeah. gone. Yeah. Yeah. Not this I think, team. Not I think AA team. I think AA and you guys hit it on the head, man. There's like a it's a it's a no kidding team game. It's not like one dude's getting picked on, you know, the the Prasinski's and like whatever. There's yeah. not one dude that's getting just beat up. I mean, did he sticking with you, the defense? Who you pick on? Yeah. I mean, did he sticking with the defense? We said the sixteen sacks and and then, you know, AA came in and we said how there's sixteen different players with touchdowns. Um the defense we got eleven dudes with interceptions. Um I mean that's more this year than the last three years combined. Um, is this just? You think this is just all from the pressure up front, or do you think that this just the the you know the secondary like helps the pressure, or the or maybe they just help each other all the time? Uh, but I mean, I don't know. I don't think it can all be related to the pressure up front. What do you think, man? I just think I do. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that we're getting a lot of pressure up front. It makes the defensive backs' life very a lot easier when when you're getting pressure, and we've. We've had teams in the past where we weren't and our DBs are getting lit up. So I, I definitely think even when we're not dialing up pressure, you have Mac on the field, man. And that's in a quarterback's head at all times. And when you get in their head and you, you make them uncomfortable, you know, they, they, they make mistakes. And we're, we're capitalizing on those mistakes. Yeah. I think maybe maybe I delivered that a little, a little fucked up for you. But uh, no, either I way, get, oh, I, my, <laughs> I get it. I think. So I honestly, obviously, you can't say that the pressure isn't helping, right? I mean, the pressure definitely helps the DBs. But there's some plays that we've seen that where, like, that one with Rodgers, he sits in the pocket like six seconds. And then the pressure gets to him because of the job that the DBs have yes. done locking, that, locking no, their yes. guys down. And, yeah, and, and but how yeah. about the coverage, man? The coverage from our linebackers, too. Yeah, Yo, exactly. Roquan, man, was fucking balled out dude the other day i mean yeah. we, we you know I, I think phil and shane brought it up uh, you know on 100 proof talking about you know the difference between him and erlacher and you know erlacher was a big guy so it, it didn't seem like it was that big of a deal him going so with roquan man he's so goddamn fast like i mean the tight ends you know what's his face kendrick's had you know a couple catches but you you watched him get Roquan was right there, right there, ready to bring him down. Same with Trevathan. Like yeah. they the linebackers in coverage too have been phenomenal over the last few weeks, not giving up anything big. And that plays a huge part in that too. And you can put yeah. pressure on a quarterback without bringing pressure. I mean, mental pressure is a thing too. And we're, by, like okay. you said, Bobby, we're covering the guys too. So, oh yeah, you're, it, we're, we're creating problem. pressure without creating pressure sometimes. Dude, too. you've seen there wasn't even any pressure on some of those plays, and you've seen Rogers like check left, check right, look right, look yep. right check over his shoulder. Like he knows that that shit's coming, and he doesn't want to face it. You well, know? I think um, that's 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 what Vic does though. And sometimes it drives people crazy and it's driven us crazy sometimes, but that's what he does. He, 
and that's why this defense can be so opportunistic is it's not just a defense that blitzes every single time or yeah. comes that comes with the same looks and blitzes out of the same looks. That's what he does. You know, they might not blitz and they might drop, you know, uh, a bunch of guys into coverage to confuse him. And, and that's where the turnovers come from, you mm-hmm. know. And, but what I think the biggest thing about this defense is they are playing for each other. Yeah. You know? mm. And and they are they are really you know they, they really you know are are got each other's back like yes like they're nothing on the else. same page you they're know? all on the and, same page yeah and you got Amos and Jackson have played together for another year together mm-hmm. Ed Donatel has these guys believing and you see how they are like after the I think it was after this game yeah, it was after this game that the, they posted on Instagram all the units had pictures. You know, their individual yeah. pictures, like the yeah, secondary yeah. had their picture with their coach and this, you know, um, they, they did that. And you can just see how it's like each there's these teams within the teams and you can tell that there's this competitive vibe where it's like you know, <laughs> secondary is going to get it done today. You know, D line. Uh, you saw it when Hicks was mic'd up. He was talking about D block, you know, that you, you nope. just. You just see how these this team has come together. They're fighting for the man next to them, and and they believe in Nagy, and they believe in Mitch. They believe in Fangio. They believe in Donatel. Yes. They believe in yes. Fern. They believe, you know, they believe in themselves, and they believe in each other. And and when all that happens, I mean, football is a is a confidence game, you know. They they it's respond to they okay. respond to one yeah. voice, and yeah. the defense responds to Fangio, and you don't have that descending voice. Like you had last year with that dumbass fucking John Fox, where he's trying to put hands in it. No, it's one voice, and once you take out the fucking descending voice, the guy trying to tweak it, and Fangio's like, "No, this is my defense," you know. And these guys respond to that. Well, and you know, hey, hey, also, the defense guys, you didn't see any uh, some guys come out and say, "Well, we want John Fox." No, they all said, "Keep Fangio, whatever," you know. Right. Regardless, Fangio that, that, is also that tough love guy, you know. Yeah, he said it, after the game, he's like, even I, even I have to say we played good. He's that guy that is not giving you a bunch of rah rah BS praise, you know. Exactly. He's the mm-hmm. guy that's like makes you earn it, makes you earn yep. every compliment you get from him, and they all want that. You know what I mean? Hey, they, hey, they, hey they, going back to everything you, were, hey, go, every, going back to everything you were just saying in the very beginning, man. Bro, I, I'm listening to you and I'm and I'm freaking smiling, bro. Because when, when every, all those characteristics that you're saying, do you understand what that is? That is the make. That is a championship team, bro. Like, yeah. don't you? I'm listening to you and I'm like, damn, I'm feeling good right now because everything you're saying, that's what it takes when you want to beat the best teams in the league. Because when you when we're gonna go have to go against the Saints, maybe in the dome, maybe in Chicago, maybe the damn Super Bowl. That's what it takes. Forget about the coaches. The coaches prepare us. But when we're on the field, these players are playing for each other, man. And I'm telling you from freaking experience, bro, when you're on the damn battlefield and the man next to you has your back, you know that man, if you miss a tackle, that man has your back, bro, it's a whole different feeling, bro. And that shit is giving me goosebumps right now because we're playing like some damn champions right now. And it's, 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 it's freaking scary. It's freaking scary, but let's just sit back. I just want to, bro, oh, my God, man. Well, and that's that's what lets Eddie Jackson do what he does, you know that that supreme confidence that he can be that 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 rover, that center fielder, that guy that's just out there, you know, can take the risks because he knows that okay, I might get beat, but on the next play we're gonna get him, or somebody's got my back, or all of a sudden out of nowhere there's this blur and it's Roquan Smith just blessing. And, and, off, and, all, and, and all I heard you say, all I heard you say, sorry, sorry, dude. All I heard you say was Ryan Pace, Ryan Pace. Because how many teams passed over Eddie Jackson because of his leg? Boom. I mean, it's like, like that's a first round talent. That's a first round pick. He would have been a first round pick if it wasn't for his injury. But we got yeah. him in the fourth. We got him. That's just, that's such a high return on that investment. And then you go to Roquan Smith, Ryan Pace, Ryan Pace, Ryan Pace. Like you guys were saying, man, he's built this team. He had he talked to the coaches, like you guys said. We got the right to kind of players. Man, this is awesome. Yeah, and, and we had a good defense last year. And, and when we drafted Roquan, man, I, when I watched his 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 stuff out of college, like all I saw was Derek Brooks 2.0. Yeah, 
Now you yeah. and I, I, I'm sticking by that, man. This kid, yeah. a lot it's like Derrick Brooks, the same, same side. Sideline to sideline speed, man. Yeah, that, yeah, right. But then we added Mac also. These are two guys yeah. you can build a defense around. We added them to an already solid yeah. defense. They, mm-hmm. they, it's, it's unbelievable. These guys are What's unbelievable. There's and a healthy, word. And a, a healthy de- tra- 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 There's one wow. word, guys, that I feel like this team says a lot. And, you know, the pregame speeches that they've grabbed of Mitch the last two weeks, he's said that word, and it's family. And yeah. these guys, you you hear them in the locker room saying it's a family, it's a family. Nagy says it. You know, these guys love playing with each other, and I think that's what makes – the team so good is you know aa gain saying he, he, the guy behind me has my back so and that's huge there's trust and that's the right. biggest thing in this game man they have it and they honestly believe that family and they're a family and the sky's the limit man exactly you know that's, what we were talking about ahead, in the preseason we were talking about in the preseason you know to get back to the original point about the d line and the dbs it's complimentary football it's simple. You know, you get a pass rush, your DBs get better. Your DBs get better, your pass rush gets better. You know, and we were concerned because we didn't have, at that time, we didn't have Mac in the conversation. You know, we're like, where's our outside rush coming from? Is it going to be Aaron Lynch? You know, we all go into camp and we're like, we don't know what we got. You know, yeah. Leonard Floyd's going to have to, well, we go out and with a man with conviction, like Ryan Pace has, he has conviction. This team plays with conviction. They this team is a reflection of its GM, and I am fucking thrilled at the way this team comes back has came together. Like the the word family, like you said, they they look like a family with that's possessed. That's yeah, and how awesome is how, how awesome is it that we have the Bears are getting better as the season goes along, but we're seeing those those other teams that were predicted to do all these great things struggle a little bit. That's what's that's what's freaking scary. That's what's awesome to see because we're just like those that that Giants team that year. We're, that, that they won those those last six games of the season and went on to win the Super Bowl. I feel like we've shown progressive growth throughout the season, and now we got to give coach the, the to, to Nagy because we're getting we're kind of getting healthy at the right time. We got some guys got to have to nurse a couple things, but in terms of our pass rush, um, Mitch keeping Mitch out, keeping Mac out, all these type of things. And oh yeah. Kyle Long is practicing again, but we go. I know that's exactly. later on. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to we'll, we'll get to Kyle in a little bit, and let's let's wrap wrap up this defense. Um, we'll talk about him here in, in you know maybe a little more in a minute, but uh, I mean it's just another great output by this defense, man. They continue to carry the team. They keep us in the fight week in week out. Uh, I think we can all honestly say that there's not really a game that the defense lost for us. Um, I mean there's there's you know that first Packer game where they came back at the end, but they came Miami. back at the end. Our, our offense didn't do anything. Only Miami. Only Miami. Yep. I'll put them you know? I mean, but I mean, I think on both of those games, you could probably turn around and say our offense could have done more. Correct. So. True. You know what I mean? Um, all right, let's switch over to this offensive side of the ball in a game where it looked like we had things under control. And honestly, like we were going to run away with it for a bit. I mean, that's how I felt being there. Uh, AA, I'm not sure if you felt the same thing, but it kind of felt like we were going to, just take that game. Uh, you guys know that that us and the Chiefs are the only two teams to have the lead in the second half of every game this year. Mm. Um, only two teams in the league that that have had the, the lead in the second half of, of every game. I don't think that's a coincidence. You know, I mean, it just kind of shows. But, I mean, this was a good balanced week. I think that, um, I mean, I think it was, what, we threw 28. Yeah, Mitch was 20 for 28. We threw 28 times. We rushed the ball 29 times. Uh, a couple costly mistakes here and there, uh, which we really shouldn't be making at this point, I think. But, hey, what do you think about the the balanced attack that we came out with this week and not not a heavy set of anything, just kind of uh, mix and match? And, and what do you think about the attack this week? Well, I, mean, I think it was good. I think that they <clears throat> Nagy has, has realized that, you know, they, they have to run the ball. They have to have some balance that, it, you know, that it really does set up other things. Um and, you know, we do want to have some time of possession. Uh, the one thing I think about the offense that is interesting is, you know, we, we come out in the first drive and we sputter, um, which, it, it, which was yeah. kind of – which was which was frustrating, you know. Um, there was penalties. Um, I, I would say that 
one thing that, that, that was a negative of this game was offensive line penalties. <clears throat> um, there was a few times where they had holding, not holding, but false starts that, that yep. kind of killed us. Um, first play of know, the game too, I think. Right? Yeah, it was first play of the game. Yeah. Um, we, you know, it was, a, it was a false start. Um, and, and again, it kind of just speaks to the resiliency and, you know, the, okay, it's fine. Next play. Don't worry about it mentality, you know, that they can kind of, you know, survive these hiccups, survive these bumps in the road. But, you know, I think it's just really smart to, to get back to this balance, you know, to get the ball rolling. Um, and it's kind of interesting. I've been listening to these national guys who are now coming around to the bears talking about what the bears do well. And they all go, Oh, well, they've got the running backs. They've got Howard and Cohen. And it's just funny because that's not what we're talking about. We've been talking about all year how they can't get Howard going and Howard's not a part of this offense. But to the national media, it's, you know, they've got a two headed monster in the backfield. Because they don't know what they're talking about. They just jumped on the damn bandwagon, man. I haven't listened to any of that damn crap yet. And I got a damn tweet I'm going to send out. I just, I'm so, man. They just jumping on, bro. They don't. All they do is fucking. All they do is fucking watching damn highlights. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why Bears Barber represents because the whole since since week one, since the off season, Phil, Shane, the whole ballroom, everybody. We 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 know our team. We say the bad and the good. But everybody now, all the motherfuckers that's going to talk about all the good things that we got right now are the same people that said we couldn't do nothing before. So I don't want to hear any of that crap. Yeah. You know what's funny? You know what's funny? That. As much as Jordan Howard is supposedly not a part of this offense, he's two hundred and he's two hundred and fifty yards away from a thousand yard season again. Oh, I know. He's a hey. sneaky he's a sneaky dude, and I know we all say uh, we all even like honestly, and I I get what we're saying that like how we you know, we've been saying this since the beginning and the national media is just jumping on now. But I think we all kind of we're on that, hey, Howard needs to get more involved, needs to get more involved. And now we come to this point and we're like, well, damn, this dude needs 250 to be over 1,000. Uh, you know, like he's – Because, Bobby, all year long we said as the weather got colder, he was going to get the ball more. We've been saying it all damn season. We, yeah, that, but that's what, the, that's, what the, that's what the hope was. As he uh, yeah, got colder. Right. But his carries haven't really gone up. They're no. just kind of they're, – he's kind of stayed the same – the same, I mean, you know – no pun intended, but the same pace exactly. throughout, and there here we are. No, you're, but, but, but you're, Bobby, you're right. The, the carries haven't gone up, but it's like the type of carries that he's getting, because it's colder, he's not going down as easy as he was earlier in the season. So, yo, yeah. he's, he's, what I'm third, what I'm he's third in the league since 2016 in rushing yards, fellas. And, yeah. I mean, I, people overlook that. You know, uh, I, I, I was, I'm was i with Phil, man. I, I think Howard can be an elite back. And, you know, the time when, when you get when you get that you get that moniker, yo, that's going to be now, man. It, it, he's needed now. At this point in the season, when the weather's changing and and everything else, and you know he he was huge in the pass game on Sunday. He had mm-hmm. he had a nice reception that you know he he's he, he caught a he nice pass. Catch. He can't. Yeah, catch, but he remember. can't. Yeah, but he can't <laughs> it goes back to that national narrative, nope. man. Like that, yeah. it, it goes back to that. You, you, you know, I I I, be, I agree with Gaines. Like all, all these other these other Bears, you know, reporters and, and everything else that that draw these conclusions, they're just watching with their you know watching the one time. We're, you know, we're sitting here. I got, the, I got the game on now. You know what I mean? Like, we actually look at this stuff. We actually pay attention to this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, Phil doing the tape never lie. He's watching it four or five times. It's not like we're making this shit up as we go along. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> who wanted to tackle Howard on, on that touchdown run? On that touchdown run up the gut? Who really oh, wanted okay. to tackle that man? No, nope. who really wanted to tackle that man? Nobody. The offensive line on that trap was beautiful. Oh, Trey Burke coming in and taking out Clay Matthews. Yeah, oh, that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Matthews, was Matthews even gave him a little extra love after that just because how pissed he was. I don't know if you've seen it, but he gave him a little thug thump afterwards because he was yeah, he's pissed a, at Burton. He's a piece of shit. Well, hey, so I know, I know, I know how we said, you know, the narrative, and I don't, I'm sure you guys remember, but for, for everybody listening, uh, at the beginning of the season, there was a little uh, back and forth, you know, a little friendly debate between David Kaplan and, and you know, the barroom zone draft 
Rock Dr. Phil uh, on Howard not being an elite running back. Um, this week, tomorrow, we're going to find out. Uh, Monday night, David Kaplan joins Bears Hour Live. He's coming back to Bears Ooh. Hour Live on oh, Monday no night. Way. Yes, sir. And uh, let's see. We'll see if there's any adjustment, you know, or maybe maybe a little crow eating, maybe a little, hey, I said this. And, and I don't really recall exactly what he said. I know he said he needs to work on his hands, and I think we all said that, and Howard did. But, um, yeah, so David Kaplan will be joining Bears Hour Live on Monday night with the goon and uh, and draft Dr. Phil. So make sure you guys tune into that Monday night. All right, let's keep this thing moving a little bit. Uh, Diddy, Mitch. This kid comes out, man. On kid comes, out. you know I love giving Diddy Mitch questions, but either way, <laughs> I'm Diddy, we got Mitch, dude. This kid comes out. Yep, kid comes out in a must-perform game. Goes twenty for twenty-eight, two thirty-five, two touchdowns, a couple rushes. You know, rushes. He, I mean, he did had like an eleven-yard rush on third down and fucking kept us moving and got the first. He moved the pocket. He gave us extra time. Uh, I mean, was this one of those pressure games that? that we really needed to see him perform or what well, selfishly i wanted like seven touchdowns thrown but it, <laughs> uh, you know what i mean but uh just because of who we were playing but um i i just think my my frustration lies in the fact that we have so many weapons so i'd, I'd like to see us challenge teams with bigger passing plays but bottom line end of the day he did what needed to be done he came through when he needed to made a made a couple clutch plays he 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 wasn't rattled at all and uh, my opinion man if mitch can outplay the opposing quarterback every game going forward not only can we get to the super bowl we can win it that bottom line if he can outplay the opposing quarterback go, you know what i mean that's that's all we <laughs> need him to do listen, yeah. listen to facts <laughs> facts facts i mean man. I don't know think still... he needs to outplay him. I, I just think he he just if he's smart in his progressions. If he doesn't turn, the, turn ball the ball over, over, don't turn the ball over. That's it. Y- yeah, yeah, I mean, it's... well, badge. The reason I'm saying outplay him is because our defense has been shutting other quarterbacks down. Oh, I get it. I as get long it. as Mitch doesn't do what he did, I mean, the the Rams game was a little living on the edge there. Yeah, oh, no, yeah. I'm, with it, you. I'm with you. We make quarterbacks have bad performances. All I'm saying yeah. is we just need Mitch to have good ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. Probably. Here's the thing is that our defense is, is giving up 18.9 points a game. we got to score 20. Yep. Right. Period. We score 20, we're winning the game. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's the end of it. I mean, you know, and that's, that's crazy because I mean, guess what? The offense is averaging 27.4. That's why we're 10 and 4. That's why we have this, right. this, this great point differential. We're number three, crazy. I think, in the league in point differential. Hey, what would you know. we be averaging? What would we be averaging without missed field goals? Oh my I'm god! Just, I, I'm just kidding. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, but, you know, man, that's legit. It's legit. And I Shane's I Shane's that hole, but I'm just saying. Shane's <laughs> brought up legit. too, like we we here. This team reminds him of how Philly was last year, but the yeah. difference mm-hmm. is the difference is we're more sustainable because. We're better, yeah. Going forward, Mitch Mitch is just going to get more comfortable in this office. This isn't this isn't our offense that's peaking right now, like in Philly last year. We're, yeah. we're winning we're winning games with our offense still learning. So next year, I think we're going to take a whole another step offensively. Thank you. Yes, this man. this team's built for longevity, man. So it's a thank you. Like uh, you know what I mean. This is great stuff. And well, if, with that, that, is, if Mitch plays the way that he's been playing, he played against Green Bay. I don't think anybody can beat us. I really don't. If he, he that's all he's got to do. Well, and that's what people have been saying. Right that's what you heard Lewis Riddick say. I mean, Lewis Riddick's been right. saying it for months. Nick that Wright, is- you know, Nick Wright said it. Um, you know, they brought up that you know that 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 conversation of that craziness with Chris Carter running his mouth. Yeah, but yeah. you know, people are starting to come around slowly on Mitch. He's not. He's still not getting any credit because. Because dude deserves credit for the way he played in that game, the way he converted third downs, the way he escaped the pocket, the throws mm-hmm. he made. It, it's it, he's he does just doesn't get the credit. I mean, yeah, you know, he, his there were, impact on, his impact on the game is more than just his throws. Right? I mean, his, How many more sacks he would have had? Any other quarterback would have been sacked like five times. We'd have had so many. We'd have had like seven, six sacks for a loss without Mitch. Yeah. Without without Mitch on that one. And that yeah. you know, I don't know when that's going to come necessarily. I'm not sure when they're going to flip 
you know, and, and start giving him credit. I don't know if it's ever going to come because there's such a strong narrative now about Watson and Mahomes and, and, you know, and that dumb fuck Greg Rosenthal put out another <laughs> ranking. And, you know, of course he's got Sam Darnold ahead of, but you know what, whatever Mitch doesn't care. You yeah, know, as, long as, we're, as long as we're getting the W man, it really right. doesn't fucking matter. This, this team doesn't care. I mean, how far Good have we come? <laughs> How far have we come from when we were cheering Akeem Hicks bumping into Glennon on the sideline? Right? <laughs> we were literally rooting for our quarterback's failure at one point, various points last year. That was a Christmas song last year. <laughs> yes. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, how far have we come? We were super stoked that one of our own guys was fucking with the quarterback on the sideline. And now these guys will run through a damn brick wall for this guy, even though he makes mistakes. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, go, go back to the Rams game. So I was just so happy that Mitch was unhappy, <laughs> if that yeah, makes yeah. any sense. Like, I was yes. so happy that the rest of the team was, like, all high, and he was just like, man, I almost let the whole fucking team down. And that's what I love about this guy is that he cares so much and and he feels it and he wants to win so much and you know and and these guys really believe in that you know what i mean and, and there is a damn difference when he's in the game and this kid is you know his eyes are downfield he looks confident he looks you know committed and and he's just he's just scratching the surface you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, if, if, if you go, if, if you gonna be on point like this, I don't gotta say nothing else. You, <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you, like, you were on point, dog. You were, you were, you were 100 right. It's like you're in my heart, in my mind, dog. Preach, bro. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you know. all these idiots on Twitter, and and then you know, oh well, he'll never be Mahomes. It's like I see <sighs> when I watch Mahomes, I see the future of Mitch. I don't see a a, a guy who can't ever be Mahomes. I see he doesn't the future have to be of Mitch. The whole thing is, but think me. Hey, so so real quick, so I think where Mitch loses a step um, on these other guys, and in this in this talk that like like we're saying against Mahomes and them, um, is on like these plays where where it's what third and one, and we like we did last Sunday, and we put Tariq as the quarterback in the Wildcat, um, and we. You know, we're we're third and we're right there. We're in our own red zone on third and one. We, I mean, that mm-hmm. Tariq Wildcat play pissed me off. And mm-hmm. it's the fourth quarter in a tie but, game. Mm-hmm. And we go on the tricky read option with three running backs. And Mitch isn't even there. I think that shows – I don't think it shows, like – I'm not saying that it absolutely shows that Nagy doesn't trust in him. Like, that's, that's a long shot, right? That's reaching. But yeah. it kind of shows these outside guys, like, well, why wouldn't they just stick with their number one? And this yeah. dude, that's that's their dude. Like, why would we get to this? I mean, Jerry, you can take it, man. Why would we do this at the point? And does that, does that show that there's maybe something, uh, you know, that, that people have to knock Mitch on? I think, you know, at first, initially, I was like, what the hell are we doing, you know? But then again, you know, I also got to think that Nagy's going to Nagy. He's going ma- he's gonna to make those plays. He's going to make those calls. He has trust in the yeah. players to execute it. So I'm going to give him that benefit of the doubt. I, I think, really, though, whenever you've got a setup like that, Mitch is just as good, actually probably better than some of the running backs yeah. in that set. If you're going to do that, just... Let him let him do it. Especially if you're yeah. gonna hand it off. How many times has Tariq Cohen handed the ball off this year? Mm. You know exactly. what I'm saying? And exactly. then we fumble. We fumble it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's basically he's trying to pull the he's running the read option. He tries yeah. to pull it out and he loses the ball. I mean, yeah. that's a okay, kid that doesn't do that very often, even though they do it in practice. And you know, it's it's like we said last week. You know, I'm okay with the trick play. I'm okay that he's going to call it every once in a while, like the fake punt. I I actually had a gut feeling that we were going to we were going to fake that punt yeah. just from our positioning on the field. But whenever Phil puts up, puts up the tape, doesn't lie, and you see the alignment, it's like, well, my my instant switch on that fake punt was that Benny Cunningham was lined up. I was like, we haven't seen Benny Cunningham in weeks. And there he is. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. It's like a, well, and, that, that was a tell. I was just like, ugh. And God. I don't know, Bobby, maybe you remember this, but in the stadium, it was it was like during that fake punt, it was some kind of weird TV timeout yeah. or something. Like I, I kept being like, what is happening? Why are we, st- why, why isn't, like who called a timeout? Like, and, and it was some weird TV timeout or something. So it was like almost like Nagy got this extra 30 seconds to think about it. And then it was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's fake it. Yeah. And, and, the, and the, that screen in the South done, end zone had some weird commercial playing and we had people running on and off the field. Like, yo, it was weird. Like yeah, I didn't know what was happening. And I was like, who called timeout? I, I couldn't figure out why. And then I was like, oh, Green Bay called timeout. And then it was like, no, they didn't. But and maybe I I don't know what happened, but all I know is that it was not it was not smooth. It was a mess. It was like right. it, it was like you know it just looked doomed from the get go. And then obviously I didn't see that 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 O'Donnell was not even lined up right. You know the way that Phil picked up on that. You know that's just what he does. But it's like it it just was bad. You know, and it really flipped the momentum. You know, Mizell on third down, and it goes back to Bobby's point. It's like Mitch has been so good on third down. He's just been so good in general. Why does Nagy get these little wrinkles, these little moments of like, you know, quote unquote, getting cute or whatever? And he'll say, "Well, that's what I do. That's me." And it's like, eh, like it's kind of what you do. Like at the same time, at the same time, we, you know, we got we to understand it's the fact that it's I, I see it as trust in the defense. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if we if we had a yeah. piss poor defense, I don't think he makes that call. But the fact yeah. that we fumbled the ball, we we fumbled the ball at the beginning of the fourth quarter and got it back with with, with only two minutes with only two minutes spent off the clock. Like my shows, go ahead. We were just punting and downing it so well. Bellamy and yeah, O'Donnell true. were like true. were like true. playing a, a little game. I mean, it was crazy the way yeah. that Bellamy was just running down there and, and like almost catching the punt. <laughs> like the five. Yeah, he, he did. He caught the yeah, punt. He, 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 yeah, he, he downed two different punts inside the five. Yeah. Like those guys were just clicking. Everything was clicking. And, and, and you know, not to be a naggy nagger, but like – you know, I, I'm sorry, but that really was was too much. It was it was a bad risk. I think, uh, yeah, was, I think so was, too. And like, look, fine. my my whole thing is I don't mind the trick plays, right? I don't mind any of that shit. I'm okay with it. He's the coach. Let him do what he does. Um, I just think it was another one of those like, uh, really, like, why are we doing wildcat in a tie game in the fourth yeah. quarter in the red zone? We're in field goal range. It's third and one. Like, what the fuck? It's why are mentality. we? It's a mentality. And look at you. And I, I, but I still wasn't scared, Bobby. When we fumbled, I was like, shit. But come on. But I still went. But I. But you guys know that feeling, that sinking feeling in your chest where the shit is about to go, is about to go wrong. That's it's what I had. It. It's still good. That's him. It still didn't, but it didn't come for me. I didn't, it didn't come for me because it was, it was. It was. It didn't come because I'll I, tell the you way what, our though. defense was playing, the way our D was playing, and I'm like, all right, let's get the damn ball back. I no, was I happy. I was happy for the air raid siren at yeah. that moment because, like, seriously, <laughs> the the air got taken out of that stadium when we fumbled, and and you know it was it, everybody looked at each other, and the Packer fans, you know, started to lick their chops. And started to look around, and, yeah. and then when they and then when they came back and tied it up, it was like, mm-hmm, this is what we yeah. do. We come in your house yep. and we shit on the rug, and and you can't say a goddamn <laughs> thing about it. And 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 you know, you know, there's been some talk about oh, the the PA announcers over the top and the air raid siren and this that and the other. No, 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 we needed that. We needed that kick in the ass. And it was, you know, it was just, you know, and I remember standing up because I was sitting with. I was just sitting by myself in the row. I didn't know anybody. I mean, I introduced myself to people around me, you know, and I was like, I was like, just so you know, guys, I'm going to be loud as fuck this whole game. So get over it. (laughs) And, and, you know, I I just, I literally stood up and I was like, no, fuck that. Fuck this. We're not doing this again. I'm not sitting down. I'm not getting this. (laughs) You know, dude, I didn't, so I didn't really like that. I didn't get that sinking feeling when they tied it. Uh, like when we went to Wildcat there, I turned to Mike and I was like, why the fuck are we in a Wildcat on third and one? I'm like, this is stupid. And then they fumble and I'm like, damn it. Like, here we go. And, uh, but 
I still didn't think that we were going to lose that game. There was, wasn't a single time in me just with the with the atmosphere that I thought that we were going to drop that game. You know what I mean? No, so, I didn't think we were going to lose it. I just I you just don't want to give Aaron Rodgers any any life, any crack. But that, that, but that made it even better. That made it even better, and for the Paul Aaron fans, you're right. Because 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 we gave him a little bit of hope, and then we smack him in the damn face. It made it made, made it feel even better. Like, and if we would have take this with you, take this with you on your way on your way home. Yeah. If we would have executed properly, Nagy would have looked like a genius. So well, it, it's, just, ex- man, execution has to do with it too. But this I, fumble but is, is becoming more and more, more and more, like closer together. I just don't. I don't. I don't know I, why the Maisel, the Maisel, the fake punt, and the, and that uh, wildcat play are just three that look. I go. Eh, why do you need to do that? Like you got guys rolling. You know what I mean? We we finally got you know uh, Mitch throwing some slants to guys. You know we finally got some bread and butter type of plays. You know and and, and it's kind of was it Cunningham? Was it Cunningham or Mizell on that big punt? Oh, uh, I'm talking about Mizell. They, Mizell. they ran him on a third down. Yeah. Uh, before that, and I just was like, "What the hell? Why is Mizell even in the game? And why, <laughs> why do you give him the ball?" All right, hey, so so that's enough on this wildcat. We talked about the fake punt badge. Why don't you uh, what'd you see out of these wide receivers in this game, man? Did you see any anything any big time out of these wide receivers? And there any guys you want to talk about? Yo, I, I'm sorry. I gotta say something about the wildcat. I, I gotta, I gotta be. I, I apologize. I've been sitting here. I've been waiting. I've been biting my time. It, go, Bad. Go. I gotta Take say the time. So I'm gonna be a naggy nagger with this bullshit. All right. <laughs> every every week, guys, we have seen this where we're third and short. And he's either taking the ball out of Mitch's hands or putting somebody other than Jordan Howard in to pick up a yard. Mm. It's my one thing that bugs the shit out of me out of, out of Coach Nagy. Howard is your power back. You've you you just dominated Aaron Donald a week ago. Put the fucking ball in Jordan's hands and pick up a yard. That's, you know, that's my own, that's, it's, it's, it's especially there. Cause even if you don't get it, you're getting three out of it, putting the ball in Tariq's hands. Like Bobby said, how many times has he done it this year? It's too big of a risk in a situation like that in the fourth quarter of a game, in my opinion. Yeah. Sorry. And it takes it credit. Out. I think it takes credit away from Mitch and it takes credit Absolutely, away from Jordan. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Uh, but, but so yeah, the wide ahead. receivers. So Yo, uh, Allen Robinson, I thought, played a fantastic game, catching short passes, turning them in, getting some yak, turning them into big gains. The catch by Bellamy, man, I was just watching it re- over again. That catch, man, dude, Balls. one of the best catches of the year without a doubt, man. Uh, the way he went up, high-pointed the football, able to pull it in while the defender was draped all over him. I thought these guys played a great game uh, last week, made catches when they need to. Cohen in the pass game was great as well. You know, we talked about Howard earlier making a nice catch and run. Those are the little things, man. You know, uh, Robinson twice took, you know, a short catch and picked up over 10 yards on the ground. That is huge, man. Yeah, man, for sure. And you I'm, look at you look at that one play to Allen Robinson where, where Mitch kind of – threw the ball to the outside, you know, and, yep. and, and when I saw it, I was like, ah, like I got, I, like, I was like, oh shit, that's a bad throw. But then you watch on the replay and it's like, no, he set him up to get the yak, you know, and, yeah. and, you know, he, he set it up so that he could spin away from the defender. And then Robinson gave him like 30 yards, yeah, you know, and, and that's another yeah. thing that's a progression for Mitch is not just, finding the open guy, finding the open guy, and then throwing it to a spot where the guy can then make a play or throwing him open, you know, and that's yeah, the he, next step. You he know, did and, that with Cohen, too, on the touchdown. He yep, throws he it sure did. outside. And Cohen, so can, and Cohen and, made a great play on that ball. But, you know, he but Mitch is, you know, Mitch is getting to the point where he's confident to throw to spots because that's not how the offense – you know, as I've said before, it's you can't see the player open, then throw the ball. If you do that, it's too late. And look you at have, his he footwork. Has, he has this to week, trust. Fellas. Right. Look he has to footwork. trust the spot and throw it to the spot. It, you know, Phil. Phil mentioned it in the tape. Never lies. His footwork was on point this week. You know, and as long as he's he's going through his prog- progression, setting his feet like he did this week, 
this I mean this offense goes to another level. Yeah. I'd like to see Anthony Miller get a little more involved too, man. It's going forward. I think, well, yeah, I think I think Miller's kind of on a on a little timeout, honestly. I think Miller's kind yeah. of uh I think he's, you know, they put I like him on, I know they put him on, I like him on special teams. Yeah, they put him on special teams, and I think he's doing good there. He went, he's like fired up coming out. He comes out quick, you know, kind of just like a little rocket shooting out of there. But I think I'm he's kind of, yeah, I think he's kind of being a little. I think he's on a little punishment timeout there for. Oh, he definitely uh, is. Route running. I yeah. think I think that I think that they're returning kicks is like a consolation prize for him. Exactly because. <laughs> He, he's definitely on a timeout. I mean, you heard Furry talk about how he thinks he's open on running plays. That's a shot. <laughs> yeah, that is. That's a big <laughs> shot. It was funny <laughs> as hell, but that's a big shot. All right, so that, look, at that that wraps up the Bears and Packer game. Um, well, for the most part, for, for the player perspective. Uh, as I kind of discussed at the opening, AA and I attended a game this week. AA, man, was this the most memorable game that you've ever been at or what, dude? Give us a little first hand. It's up there, man. Um, you know, the, I, I, I took uh, 17 years in between uh, Bears games, which is kind of insane. I mean, I didn't live in Chicago and it was bad teams. And, you know, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I'm not generally a person that looks to go out of my way to go see live NFL games. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's such a good television product that, you know, that's not that's just not something that, you know, I use my Sundays for, you know, because it yeah. is you give the whole day. But. I just knew I had to go to this game and, you know, I, I threw down the money and, and obviously everybody was coming in town and I wanted to go to this game. And, and yeah, I mean, from the, from, from the jump, I mean, I couldn't sleep the night before. I, I mean, we obviously had such a cool ass time, you know, at, at, at my restaurant and, and that was a great time. But I really, I like, I, I joked around and I said, I took a series of unfortunate naps the night before the game. That's, and that's that really so awesome. it was. That is so awesome. And and I couldn't it's because <clears throat> my mind was like racing. You know what I mean? Like I just I was so ready to watch this game and I and I <clears throat> like I couldn't quite comprehend the reality of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That really there and we were really had a chance to win the division and not just do that, but against the damn Packers. And then the fucking sun, man. The sun was unbelievable. Like, I know. <laughs> like, I, I, and, I, and I put that tweet out. I was like, we really had our day in the sun, you know, and, 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 and it was like that, man. I took off my jacket. I had, my, I had short sleeves on at one point. I took off my hat. I had to put it back on because my hair was looking greasy as hell. <laughs> but <laughs> it, was, it was crazy, man. I mean, people were so hyped up. And you saw a few Packer fans here and there, you know, um, you know, but it wasn't it, it wasn't like it's been in the past. I mean, from what I've heard over the last 10 years, you go to Bears Packers and it's 40 percent Packer fans who can't get tickets to the lamp to Lambeau Field. You know, this was not that way. I mean, you know, the, the everybody was fired up, you know, people just. Just, just, just this vibe and people running around making sure that those terrible towels of our own, you know, the bear down towels were in the cup holders ready yep. to go. And, and the PA announcer is fired up. And I mean, it just felt different, man. Like it just, it just felt. And, and, and when we won that game, like I literally stood in my seat and I just screamed. Like I was just like, ah, like I just yeah. was like. It just felt like this amazing release, this, this, this stress, this, this, you know, this knot, you know, when you have a knot in your shoulder and finally somebody gets it and it just comes out and you're just like, ah, you know, like that's, <laughs> that's how it felt. Yes, like it was yes. like, this, this monkey is, is off our back, oh. you know, like get off our damn field. Fuck you, green and yellow. Fuck get it, it, hey, get it, bro. Get it, bro. Smoke ass piece of shit. All of a sudden, and I remember at the beginning of the game, oh, I'm God. sitting there and I'm on Twitter and I'm like, I'm like, Greg Braggs is on the fucking field. We win in this fucking game. Like, but <laughs> Greg Braggs is all of a sudden posting videos from the damn field and 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 they're playing the Bears music and everybody on the Bears is just just swagged out just dancing like yes you are in our fucking house right now you yeah, can't get yes. even grab a cup of water without talking to me first because this is our fucking house and, and we, just <laughs> did it. we just did the damn thing everybody was so 
everybody was so hyped. Like, like oh. you know, I didn't even need a beer. Like, I had one beer in the beginning, and I didn't even think about a beer for the rest of the game. Like, oh. all I, I was drinking like screams <laughs> you know, was, was, and then when we ran around the stadium at the end we just yeah that was awesome just ran around the, <laughs> we ran around the stadium like straight up morons and we just yeah, kept, we did. let's go bears and got them <laughs> so awesome so, it was like and i just couldn't wait to turn the next corner and scream again <laughs> and, and, and get into a bigger more echoey area and and scream yeah. Again. And then we went outside and we were taking pictures and the bucket boys were Hell yeah. and I gave some homeless person begging. I gave her like twenty dollars. Like <laughs> seriously, there was an old lady in a wheelchair and like like we were all yelling, Packers suck and screaming and yelling, and I just pulled twenty dollars out of my pocket and threw it in her cup and like <laughs> we just <laughs> couldn't oh, stop yeah. us. Like Hey, hey, out here changing lives and shit. Good yeah, for you, bro. Yeah. Just saying, we could you couldn't stop us. Like the city yeah. was, was on fire. Like, and and then I, you know, and then after a while, I was like, oh shit, I gotta go home. Like, yeah, I was, I was, like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, and I, and honestly, like, I wanted to go home and I wanted to see my kids and I wanted to tell them about it. You know what I mean? And like, and, and I ended up, you know, kind of separating from everybody. I had to go back, you know, deal with my shit. But I fucking sat, I got on the bus, like I just got on the bus and I was like, and I sat there on the bus and I must've looked like a crazy person. Like I felt like I looked like a crazy person. And then at some point I must've fallen asleep. <laughs> I literally, Cause I literally, I, I woke up to my phone dropping on the floor of the bus <laughs> and I go, Ugh. and I woke up and like these people are looking at me, but they could just tell that. They knew what was happening. You know what I mean? And, 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 <laughs> and, around and, you watch, and there was just this, this like happy drunk feeling. You're Everybody, right, man. Definitely. Like, it was, it was like super electric. I mean, we, we all got together. AA was only a section to my right. Um, we're texting each other. He's like, look to the, look right. You know, we're like screaming and shit during the game. And then like at the end, uh, we all went and met up together and, and like, we're hanging over the side on the field. We're taking pictures. Um, yeah, it was just electric, man, cheering and chanting and, you know, like telling Packer fans to go the fuck home and like the bucket boys and the little, and the little, uh, you know, the tunnel there and like all of it, man, even going over the bridge to get back and, and everybody's just yelling and screaming. And it was like just a celebration. I went back to the tailgate parking lot with everybody, hung out maybe like five minutes, 10 minutes. And then I hopped in the car and drove back home. And even on 94 South, like dudes are hanging out of windows, you know, like screaming. And like, uh, dude, I'm, yeah. like, I'm like 20 minutes away from the stadium, but, you know, to get to my house. But dudes are still on 95 or on 94 on the way home, just screaming out the windows and like, Man, it was just, it was electric. Like, you just, I was riding by myself, and I know how AA felt in the bus. I just got, like, this big smile on my face driving by myself and, like, fist bumping out the window and shit. And, like, uh, I don't know, man. It was just, it was electric. It was something, you know, and I'm the same way. I haven't been to a Bears game in Chicago in a long time, man. But I always, like, every year I get to to one or two road games. But um, it was just, it was an electric, and it was it was a great game, something I, you know, I'm so glad that, that we all got to go to hang out, you know, meet each other and just like the weekend, everything combined, man, it was something really special. And, uh, you know, I mean, obviously the win and keeping the, or taking the North was just the icing on the cake and, and, uh, you know, being together and, and all that, it was, it was really just hands down a hell of a weekend, man. Uh, a big, big redemption. I think that we needed in, in the eyes of bears fans and, and for all of us to keep going, um, you know, and with that, man, we'll we'll keep on rolling here uh, with another, I'd call it big redemption. Um, you know, not only winning the North, but also we got some Pro Bowl recognition, boys. We got some Pro Bowl oh, yeah. awardees. You know what I'm saying? Some Pro Bowl players out here on the Bears. Uh, we're right there. We got five selectees. I think the most in the league was seven from the Chiefs or the Chargers. I don't know, but either way, I think we're like fourth or or fifth or or whatever with five selectees. Um, but so we got guys that are in, right. The guys who are in are Mac, 
uh, Hicks, Fuller, Jackson, and Treak. Um, hey, what do you think about these guys getting selected? And, you know, what does it say that they're all defensive? I mean, I know Treak selected, but Treak selected as a special team nod. So uh, what does it say about, you know, all of our guys basically getting selected for defense? Man, it says that uh, <clears throat> we recognize what the hell's going on, and so does everybody else. I mean, you know, the, it's one-third fans, one-third players, one-third coaches. Yeah. And and the fans know what's up, and the Bears fans have been representing and voting. But the biggest thing that told me that people knew what the fuck was going on is Kyle Fuller leading the vote. Because dude yeah. does not even have social media. There was no way to, like, do, you know, this, like, kind of – you know, uh, artificial pump up the vote kind of thing. Like they, everybody understood that this dude is, is possibly one of the best corners in the league now. And that, that recognition, you know, has just sprung board us and obviously Khalil Mack, but then yeah. Akeem Hicks and Akeem Hicks kept doing it wrong on Twitter. Like I just one, I didn't say anything to him, but I'd be like, bro, you're not even doing it right with the hashtag. Like, like you're trying to, you're trying to get the vote going, but it's, I don't think it's even counting because you're not putting the hashtag in whatever. But at the end of the day, it shows me that it's, it's not just us. Everybody knows what's going on. Everybody sees what this team is. Everybody sees this defense and nobody wants to play us. And, and we're getting the recognition that we're supposed to get, and and that's just a culmination of it, you know what? And I and I hope that not one single person plays in that game because we're still playing football the next week. Yeah, that's no how shit. Hundred percent. I mean, Jared, is. let's 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 stay with Hicks and roll over to you, Jared. What do you think? Uh, I mean, this is this is Hicks's first Pro Bowl, man. His first time voted in. Um, Should have been there last year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what do you think this does for him and his gameplay, and basically just him as a football player? Oh, uh, just gives you more confidence as a player. Anytime that you're selected to like an all-star team of any kind, it just pumps your chest out a little more. And it shows that, you know, your efforts are rewarded. You know, it's like, I yeah. worked my ass off for this. I deserve this. He deserved it last year. He finally gets it this year. I mean, all it can do is just fuel him more. You know, who, who doesn't want to motivate a team Hicks? <laughs> I'm I'm good with it. <laughs> Keep that dude rolling. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so outside of these five that got selected in, we also had seven alternates. Uh, I mean, some I'm, some people are going to be admit, surprised because of all the shit talking, but Trubisky's in as an alternate. Trey Burton, Roquan Smith, Cody Whitehair, uh, Danny T, Danny Trevathan, damn Charles Leno, uh, and and Leonard Floyd. They all got selected in as alternates. Uh, Diddy, you know, I'm coming your way. Here we go. Mitch sat out two games, dude, this year, and he's going in as an alternate. A uh, guy that's highly been questioned by the, the media as being, um, you know, not there as a quarterback, but now here he is as a Pro Bowl alternate. What's your thoughts on that, man? I think he, I think eventually he will be a Pro Bowl quarterback. I mean, a, a lot of it's stat driven with these guys that get in, especially with like the fantasy football. And so statistically, I, what is it, Breeze, Rodgers, and Goff got in as the starters, or as the Pro Bowlers, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. That, that's, I mean, you, it, we're, a couple of the guys were just outside that window statistically of them being Pro Bowl caliber as far as the, the, the stats. Um, I, I think Mitch, Mitch is on that. He, he will be a pro bowl quarterback. You know what I mean? I think he's, he's on that cusp and, and he's, he's winning games. And I, I think that's the league's taking notice of that. And so are the fans. Well, and it reminds you too, that it's not just Twitter. You know what I mean? No, it's like, not. The whole I mean, world is not just Twitter. The whole is not necessarily buying into this, this either love or hate Mitch mentality. You know, <clears throat> there's a lot of bears fans in this country and a lot of Bears fans realize that what we have, you know, which is for the first time in a long time, a dude that we can, you know, you know what, fuck you, Michael Lombardi. We're buying that 10 jersey and I'm going to have it for 10 fucking years. You know what I mean? Like, because this is the dude, you know, and, and that's what's cool. And it's two thirds, not the fan vote. So guys in the league realize this kid's a player. You know what yeah. I mean? Definitely. Definitely. I mean, it's, we'll we'll get into the not just Twitter here in a minute, but and snubs and that, but definitely because Adrian Amos was the number one vote getter on Twitter. 
and he's not going as an alternate or as in. Um, so I think he was a huge fucking snub. You guys know I, I love the way the kid plays, but I mean, all in all, it doesn't matter where you end up on Twitter because right. there's yeah, there's a whole nother piece to this or two more pieces think, to this. Now think about Leonard Floyd. Think about the the narrative on Leonard Floyd, and he's he's an alternate. You know, yeah. Well, I think we got to go back to to true guys. You, I, I want to say it, it was the Bears website or or somebody that put it out. It's been thirty three years since we've had a quarterback. Yes, <laughs> even anywhere near the fucking Pro Bowl, and and this mm-hmm. kid's in technically his second year, but his first year in Nagy's offense and. His leadership, his you know, his drive, his his mental toughness, his his ability to recognize, hey, you know, I could have cost us this game. He is everything. Chris Myers is comparing him to Aaron Rodgers during the broadcast, and I went back at him. I go, don't fucking compare Mitch Trubisky to Aaron Rodgers. Never compare a Bears quarterback to a Packers quarterback. I go, just talk about Mitch himself because for the next <laughs> dozen years, you're gonna see a shit ton of them. You know. Yep. It, it, He's his own guy. He's doing his own thing, and he's earning the respect that he's getting, and it helps that he's got playmakers around him and that this defense is there. Roquan Smith, another one. Roquan, man, I I thought, to me, because he was a rookie, I didn't think he'd start, but to see him in as an alternate, he's had a phenomenal year. Bobby, you you talked about some snubs. Eddie Goldman, man, I I can't believe Eddie Goldman, man. Yeah, so, I mean, I know we have – I know we had a little different breakdown, but uh, let's let's get into this. Let's go into fucking rubbed and snubbed. <laughs> like, so who do you think's there that maybe shouldn't be there, and who do you think isn't there that deserves to be there? We're gonna go around the room. Let me uh, let me, I'll fire this one off to to the big Gaines report first. Let's go to Gaines first, and uh, and then I'll come to you guys. So, Gaines, who do you think's in that maybe is uh? You know, or maybe nobody. And then who do you think didn't get in that should be in? I mean, yeah, everybody that's in, I can make a case for. Yeah. So I, I, can make, I can make a good case for. Um, I, I'm not sure where Prince ended up in the voting at the end of it. I mean, it's, it's, certain, it's certain stats that they're looking at. Yeah. But, um, um, but Eddie Goldman, Eddie, Eddie Goldman, I, I would just like to see, I would like to see more activity. Most guys, I'm so glad Hicks got in. Because he does it for like all of the, the D linemen and stuff, but I'm, I'm really cont- I'm kind of content. I mean, I'm kind of content with it. I would like to see. I mean, offensively, the ball gets spread around so much; it's hard for any wide receiver to fully take over and have that 1,200 yard season, like we're yeah. used to seeing most um, top wide receivers do. Mitch getting as an alternate, it's I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of content. I can make a couple more cases for a couple. Of, we should have more guys on defense, honestly. Um, but besides that, you guys hit it all on the head. Mitch will be a starting um, um, Pro Bowl quarterback. And um, just to touch on a few things like you, that you said earlier, Bobby, this is the Bears have – this is the second time that Bears went towards an offensive coach, like yeah. after the March experiment. Now we have the Nag experiment. And so when we talked about 34 years of not having a Pro Bowl quarterback because it's always been run the ball and defense, run the yeah. ball and defense. And now we finally the, – the Chicago Bears, one of the most historical franchises in the NFL – have have turned have turned the time and they did it at the right time and it all came together because you have the coach and the quarterback and the offensive line to make it happen. Yeah, definitely, man. Jared, what about you, man? You got any snubs? Any guys that you think, uh, you know, besides Goldman, anybody you think that should get in there that isn't? Well, I'd like to have seen Trevathan make that starting group. The okay. dude has balled out all year, consistent, running that middle of the defense. Uh, that's the dude that I would say, yeah, that he, he deserves more pub. He does. He deserves more love. And as yeah. Bears fans, I don't think he gets enough love. I think he's a quiet contributor. And, and I, so the, I guess this could be a good thing and a bad thing, but I, I actually like the fact that Roquan doesn't have all this pressure on him being a first round pick because of all these yes. all this publicity. Mm-hmm. Correct. That I was going to say that gets. earlier. But I guess this is the, earlier. yeah. But I guess this is the the poison side of it to where Danny T doesn't get much publicity because of this defense. Um, even though the dude's out there killing it every week, you know? yeah. I mean, the best You're way to take right. pressure off a rookie is to yeah. give him a guy like Mac and give Akeem Hicks. Yeah. How do you take pressure off of him? Easy. You don't make it about him. Yeah, exactly. It's about, and he's just doing his job and. 
patrolling and running people down and doing what he does. <laughs> yeah, moving right. right. He, he right. was getting turnovers at the beginning of the season. He was getting those, yes. those loose fumbles, and, and um, he was in them on almost every tackle. I mean, Jerry, yeah. that's a great point. Yeah, I mean, that kid, that kid just shows up. I mean, every time you put the tape on, it's like, wow. Yeah, wow. and I mean, with Roquan, that uh, that interception was, that he had in the um, in the Rams game, he said that he was like celebrating. He's like, "That's my first interception since high school." He's like, "I don't, I don't play, I don't play coverage." You know, he's wow. like, "Normally, normally I sit zone or I run in, and I haven't done that in a while." And he's, but the way this kid moves left to right and gets into coverage, man, is, pretty, is something special. What about you, Diddy? You got somebody that you think got snubbed or what? I think I would take Floyd off the list and put Amos in as an alternate. Um, mm. The the guy, I think Roquan got snubbed for not being in the pro ball, being an alternate. Yeah. I think um, that, that first game where he was on a almost like a pitch count or snap count, whatever you want to say, um, Bob, Bobby Wagner had 100, has 114 tackles. Roquan has 107. And I, that, that game, if he played the full game, couldn't tell me he was going to have 10 tackles. Yeah. I think um, I think that was a name recognition thing. I think I think Roquan Roquan's a perennial Pro Bowler. He, he, this this kid he he's just nasty man, and I think just going forward he's he's going to be a, just a great player, one of those Chicago Bear linebackers that we're all going to remember as one of the greats. I agree, man, and I also think that this might be like some of like a little bit of the well that that's enough bears players like let's let's move on like we got a, we got enough from the defense let's uh let's keep going and let's give it to this guy instead you know what i mean it's I all think- they ain't going to play anyway yeah hey what about you <laughs> hey you got any snubs uh i mean i, I want to I, I look at the ros- the the pro bowl roster and there's a couple of things i think i think one is that there's definitely a political aspect to it where they try to get at least somebody from every team yeah. You know, because 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 if you look at it, there's some guys except, where you just except kinda, for the Bills, <laughs> yeah, except <laughs> for the Bills. But there's a lot of you know guys where it's like you know I'm looking at this the the Chargers lead with seven guys, you know, um, you know, and and I think that's legit. But it seems like there's certain guys like you look at the like tackles. Uh, you telling me that Trent Williams from the Redskins has had a better year than Leno? Or, or some of these other guys? I don't think so. I mean, the Redskins offensive line got their quarterbacks straight up murdered. H- how can anybody go <laughs> to the Pro Bowl from, from – I mean, there was a time where there were literally one h- hospital room, two Redskin quarterbacks. H- yeah. How do you send a, 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 a offensive lineman from the Redskins to the Pro Bowl? Like, sorry, you know. Uh, and so I think that's kind of interesting. I think Darius Slay being in is kind of a head-scratcher. Yeah. You know, I feel like they just give the Pouncey brothers the Pro Bowl nods every year. Like, d- nobody really checks. Oh, yeah, center, uh, Pouncey. You know, like, you know, they, the, Pouncey will, the Pouncey brothers will be getting votes for the Pro Bowl even after they're retired because everybody just thinks that they're, <laughs> you know, like and, – and don't get me wrong, those guys are solid. Um, but – and then I think what's fucked up about the Pro Bowl is they still don't understand the way that rosters work. Like – yep. There should be no I was full, just there should be no ahead. fullbacks in the Pro Bowl. Like, sorry, just have so, another back. Like, so I'm, I'm not on the same. I'm not on the same page there. I think if it's a position in football, then there should be a Pro Bowl. So I'm on the opposite. I think there should yeah, be a nickel I, corner, man. Right, I there think, should be nickel yes. corner. And, I think and Bryce the, Callahan is like one of the yes. biggest snubs on our team this year. Besides yep. Eddie Goldman, I think Bryce is a fucking huge snub. Agreed. But then you also there's there's only there's so few interior lineman spots. Like yeah, that's that's crazy. You know, I mean, you know, you look at. I mean, I think uh, even Snacks Harrison commented that that he felt he was snubbed, and a lot of guys came out on Twitter, you know, and and said, you know, they felt snubbed, but you only. I mean, you only give a shot to to three offensive linemen for starters, uh, interior linemen. Sorry, not offensive, defensive interior linemen. I mean, you know, you can't sit here and go, okay, you say, well, where's Eddie Goldman? The the starters on defense are Aaron Donald, Fletcher Cox, and Akeem Hicks. Like, Aaron Donald and Fletcher Cox are sick. Those guys are badasses. Yeah. And Akeem Hicks is also a badass, but he doesn't get the stats like Fletcher Cox and Aaron Donald do. You know, See, the way I think the Pro Bowl is a little messed up, though, the way it goes. Um, I think the NFL really misses out on some some marketing aspect of it. Um, 
I'm not saying give people handouts in that, but I am saying that I think every team should be represented. Um, there's no way you can't find at least one person per team because like the whole Buffalo Bill fan base, nobody's going to, to go watch the Pro Bowl. Nobody's going to buy a ticket and go down there. It should be a celebration of the NFL season that just happened. And, you know, the like the end, like kind of the wrap up of the season and where all the fans get to come together one last time and and just, you know, do their thing and cheer for their players. I think it's, you know, there's there should maybe there should be a limit to to how many or whatever, but I don't think that there should be teams that have none. And I don't think that uh, that guys should that each each position should not be represented. I agree. Well, and, then, Bobby, and you got the, the Chiefs guy has 14 sacks. Uh, uh, Chris Jones mm-hmm. is not in the Pro Bowl. <laughs> like, that's, I mean, you know, that's kind of wild to me. Yeah. The biggest thing for this game is that your players that play in it don't, don't get injured. They, they, they come out unhurt. The easiest way to do that is expand the roster. So guys are getting yeah. less snaps. And if you can expand the roster and have a player from every team or multiple players from every team, it's just smart on the NFL's part and might make players more apt to playing in it. You know what I mean? You see a lot of guys that will back out because they're nursing a, a small injury that, you know, really could they play a couple of series? They could, but you know what? They're like, eh, yeah, nah, I'm good. I'm not, I'm going yeah. to forget it. You know what I mean? Like if they expanded the roster to, to, you know, I, I just think that's an easy way they can correct it. I agree, man. And it's not all about the game. I mean, there's a lot of fan interaction and fan zones and like, damn, they do the pump pass and kick and they do like the accuracy challenge. And I mean, you can get all kinds of guys. You could do a fucking egg toss and people would come and watch it. Absolutely. Like it. It's just crazy. Badge, you got anybody that you think got snubbed or what? Yo, so I, I, I was, I agreed with Diddy on Floyd, but then I, you know, I, like I said, I'm rewatching the game, and after Floyd's first sack, he kind of teabagged Rodgers, so I'm kind of good with leaving him <laughs> in. I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh, shit, he him. that's great. Um, you know, I think Whitehair should have been a starter, man. I mean, this, this dude has had a multitude of guys on either side of him. You know, both uh, he's had to deal with Cush and Daniels and that that switching up Witzman and and Cush and and you know I I just feel Whitehair really deserved to be a starter. Um, obviously Eddie Goldman I mentioned Bryce Callahan and Adrian Amos I, I totally agree with Amos. Uh, Phil and Shane talked about it. You know on Hunter Proof talking about you know his contract situation. To me, you've got something here in him and Eddie Jackson that you haven't had in a long time. To me, he's a no brainer. He has to stay here. Now, if Deion Bush comes out and can perform at the same level or better, maybe I'll change my mind. But to me, Amos has to be a stay here and he should have been on this pro bowl roster. Hey, so let me, let me run a little piece. I don't know if you know, but let me run a little, a little piece on you guys real quick. So Eddie Jackson, Adrian Amos, right? Yep. Eddie Eddie Jackson is older than Adrian Amos. Eddie yep. Jackson Eddie Jackson is twenty six. Adrian's twenty five. I don't know that. Wow. Adrian is twenty five. I mean, it's only by a couple months. I want to say Adrian is like an April, and Jackson's a December. Um, Jackson, I think, just had a, a birthday like last week or two weeks ago. But these two dudes, I mean, Amos, we're on a contract here. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? And he's younger than Jackson is. You keep this these two together. I mean, that should be a selling point right there in my mind. Absolutely, man. You Absolutely. lock this dude you lock this two down and you keep these dudes together. Um man, I, I, was hearing, hearing, I was hearing that this week about Eddie Jackson. I was trying to figure that out. Like I was like, I'm looking at Eddie Jackson, like, is he on some weird like Dominican birth certificate shit or something? Because like I, I couldn't figure out how the hell is he so old? Like, yeah, like, did he did he play in junior college? Did he like not start playing? Like, I, it's 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 weird to me that he's that he's so old. I mean, it, it is what it is. You know, it, it, you know, look at uh, Ed Reed. Ed Reed played, you know, nearly twenty seasons. So it's not like yeah. it's not that yeah, big of a exactly. deal. But that is bizarre that he's that old, right? And that Amos is on his contract year, and he's he's younger than Jackson is. And like, just think of what could be built out of these two together and, and uh, keeping it that way. And I mean, 
I know, I know we all have the love for Amos and, and, you know, we think he got snubbed from there and Adrian Amos, man, he just happens to be the man of the day, the centerpiece of the segment that we know and love. And we like to call the badge of honor badge of honor is our segment where we highlight a player, you know, one bear player and, and let you guys know how he helps out, you know, charity, what he does for charity and basically, you know, helps out his community. Uh, let the fans know what these guys are doing and, uh, that all too often basically just goes unnoticed. Uh, Ryan Badgley's our man. He's he's the the you know the runner of Badge of Honor. He's gonna run this thing to the ground, and uh, you know kick in all the required info for us. And uh, this week we you know our guy is Adrian Amos. So Badge, go ahead and take it away, brother. Yeah, man. Uh, perfect perfect segue, man. This guy, dude. I, I love Adrian Amos. I love his game. And uh, if you don't know, he wears number 38 for our Chicago Bears. He plays safety. As Bobby was just saying, he was born April 29th, 1993. He's age 25 years old. He's six foot, 214 pounds. He went to Calvert Hall High School in Townsend, Maryland. Went to Penn State University. Was a uh, round five pick 142 in the 2015 draft. He's a only been a Chicago Bear. Uh, a couple of awards he's won. He was the PFWA All-Rookie Team. He was on that team in 2015, and he was a Brian Piccolo Award winner in 2016. Uh, his career stats, uh, for some reason, uh, the NFL app is a little bit behind the eight ball here. Through Week 11, he's got 245 tackles, two sacks, three forced fumbles, 15 pass deflections, three interceptions, and one defensive touchdown. And his charitable organization is actually his own organization that he supports. It's called I'm Still Here. And this foundation raises money for things such as Alzheimer's research, research, excuse me, as well as underprivileged youth. And he's got a great event coming up on Thursday, January 3rd. It's the 2019 Celebrity Bowling Night, and it'll feature Adrian Smash Amos and some of his teammates. And um, you can go out and bowl with them. It's from 7 to 10 p.m. at Brunswick Zone Hawthorne Lanes. That's at 316 Center Drive, Vernon Hills, Illinois. Individual tickets are $100 each. That gives you one lane to bowl, and it includes food and drinks. And uh, lane sponsors, you can get a lane sponsorship for $800. It's eight tickets to the event, one lane to bowl, um, a logo included on the sign, um, and your lane, and food and drinks as well. Um, so, And then if you're looking to be a title sponsor, $2,500, you get 18 tickets or 16 tickets, two lanes, your logo um, included on the, ga- on the lane, and the event signage, um, you also get it... Um, uh, Central lanes in the middle of the alley, and obviously food and drinks. Uh, don't know what other players are coming out, but I'm sure uh, there'll be a host of them. These guys, we mentioned family. Um, we've seen it throughout the season. All these teammates go out and support, you know, anything that their that their teammates are putting on. So a great event, a chance for you to go out and hang with Adrian Amos and uh, knock down some pins. And uh, my prediction for Adrian this week, uh, eight tackles, two pass deflections, one interception, and a touchdown off of that interception. And uh, I'm excited to to hopefully uh, get Adrian a new contract so he stays a Chicago Bear. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, Barflies, if you can get out there and support Adrian and everything he's doing in the community, uh, you know, go bowl it up, throw down, support all-timers, charity, you know, and uh, show these players, you know, how much it means and that that we appreciate everything they're doing. Um, I actually heard this thing uh, last week, and then I, I kind of looked it up again. Um, we're going to drop the link to this event in the Barfly Tailgate Show on Twitter. Uh, we'll, we'll share it on Facebook and all that. Um, I actually reached out and, and talked to Adrian yesterday about uh, pushing the event and all that, and it is so appreciative of, of uh, you know, Bears Bar Room and, and the Barfly Tailgate Show doing this and putting it out there. Uh, really excited, man. If I was in Chicago, I'd be going up there. So if any of you guys, uh, you know, can find the time and get up there, just a, a great event and go, you know, go celebrate the North with these guys and go celebrate these, uh, you know, what they do in their off time and, and show them that you really appreciate things that they get going on, man. Um all right, boys. Badge, good work, man. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, and step on and move on to our upcoming opponents, the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, this was a team that was expected to produce this year. 
Um, granted, they haven't done shit, but, <laughs> but they, were, <laughs> they were expected to produce. Uh, hey, hey, this team's been riddled with injuries, man. They got 12 dudes on the IR. Uh, what do you think the biggest downfall for the Niners is this year? I mean, you know, didn't we uh, didn't we hear that the uh, that John Lynch won the off season? And didn't we hear that John Lynch uh, beat Ryan Pace and fleeced Ryan Pace and took all his draft picks and put together yeah. this uh, made made the big trade and got Garoppolo yeah. and and mm-hmm. you know all this and that and the other. Well, what happened? Mm-hmm. Nothing. They, mm-hmm. they I mean injuries, whatever. You know what I mean? Teams have injuries. You know, I mean, sure they lost Garoppolo. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the one thing I think about about the 49ers is they do have some pieces. You know, they do have Kyle Shanahan. They, you know, they pulled this Mullen kid out of the back of Brett Favre's truck or something. Hey. Yep. You know, um, and and he's actually played pretty well. And you got these a holes comparing Mullen's QBR to Mitch's QBR. Just, making me want to set, you know, people's houses on fire, like with the craziness of these statements. But end of the day, they don't have enough to to compete to, you know, to be a consistent team that's going to win every week in, week out. I mean, maybe if, if you know, if they figured out Mullins earlier, because they didn't even know what they had with Mullins. They were throwing Bethard out there and, and and you know they were just throwing shit against the wall, seeing if it stick. Um, but you know he's he's uh, you know he's got he, he doesn't have a lot to work with. You know they got Breda um, who who stepped up, um, and you know they got a lot of young guys, and they got Shanahan who's you know who's who's uh, you know obviously a good play caller, good play designer. Um, they don't have a lot of defense. Um, you know, so it, it's a team that that is very beatable, but it's also a road game, and they also just beat the Seahawks somehow. Yeah. Um, you know, people say that's a penalty marred game, or 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 this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, they beat the Seahawks, and and it's funny because before last week, a, a lot of people were telling me that the Cowboys and the Seahawks were were real deal NFC playoff teams that we needed to think about. Well, what happened? <laughs> you know, and, and it just goes to show you that any team can beat any other team on any given Sunday. So, I mean, that the 49ers are are not to be taken lightly because, you know, they get paid too. And, yeah. and you know, but at the end of the day, it's a team that on, on every level, if you go matchup for matchup, you're taking the Bears basically yeah. at, at every position. Yeah. yeah, without a doubt. I think uh, honestly, Mullins has come out. He's and he's just kids yeah. firing away, man. I think he's caused some possible questioning. I think uh, the Niners can get out of Jimmy G's contract at the end of next year, and that might be something that they're looking at if this quarterback controversy thing actually uh, comes to fruition. Now, Badge, how, how big of a cut do you think uh, the Niners losing Jimmy G was? Dude, I, I I honestly think it's huge. I mean, think about us if we lose Mitch. That means Chase Daniels, our guy. You know, and uh, yeah, while he played, you know, OK on Thanksgiving, you look at that Giants game, man. And uh, I mean, he, he did not play well. So uh, you flip the script and that's us and we lose Mitch for for an extended period of time. Uh, you know, it could could have been bad for us, too. But I think for the Niners, I mean, they're they've still got some guys that can contribute. I think, you know, Mullins, I think, has done a nice job, um, you know, in the limited time. Their win against the Seahawks was big, um, gives them a little bit of confidence coming into this game. Uh, you know, us just clinching the north, you know, they I, you know, can they hurt it? You know, we lose this game. It doesn't hurt us. It does because it takes us out of the chance for possibly uh, a first round buy, that which I don't really want. But that's my personal opinion. But having twelve guys on IR, man, I mean that that can kill your roster. Those are huge contributors that you know done for the year. Definitely. Yeah, without a doubt, man. You lose twelve guys to the IR, and, and I mean that's just. I mean it's a crippler. Yeah, yeah, we were there last year. But wait, you, you know said you don't really want the first round buy, dude. I, I don't, and 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 my reasoning for why is a the the buy, our first buy of the regular season, and then the little mini buy we had just against the Giants. Okay. I, I just don't feel like we we come out 
off a bye very well at this point. I, I'd rather have us continue to play and keep the momentum that we have going, especially if we win these last two games, and just fucking knock this thing out of the park, man. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree one hundred percent. Yeah, I, I don't want to buy. Uh, let's let's let. Uh, I disagree. Long rest up a little more. Let's let Jackson rest up, possibly come back. But I get what you're saying. I get the you know your side of the ball there and and how you're uh, spinning it. And I mean it's it's something to think about. Uh, maybe we'll get into that a little later. But let's let's keep on rolling here. Um, Jared, the only thing this team, the Niners, the only thing they really have left is to spoil other teams, man. Uh, yeah. I mean, all they can really do is ruin somebody's season or or not ruin their season, but take away that buy. They have us left and they have the Rams left. Uh, mm. I mean, it's it's crazy. Hopefully they, it's save, between, that. Hopefully they yeah. save that spoiler for that last game of the year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you think they help us secure this buy or, or what do you think? I think anything's possible on any given Sunday, you know. They're, I mean, you just watched them beat the Seahawks. I mean, Seahawks, they have their problems. They have their struggles across the fronts. But, you know, we need to go in and kick their ass and not give them a breath, just like we said against the Giants. Go in, destroy them, don't give them hope. Because they'll lie down if you, if you let them. You know what I'm saying? If you keep them in a game... They're they're gonna stay. They're they're gonna be like, oh well, hell, let's let's play a football game then. No, you go out and you bury these fools, bury them quick. Don't let Robbie Gold kick six field goals and beat you. Bury that demon. That's the next demon that needs to go. It's the Robbie Gold demon. Yeah. Yeah, I think I might have lost you guys right there. Can you hear me right now? No, I think no, we, we got you, dude. Okay, gotcha. Good. My I, bad. Think Gears, I think Gears right. You can't give him hope. I mean, there's a lot of business decisions being made this time of year. Odell Beckham hasn't played since that Bears game, like you know, because of quad injuries or whatever. You know, just you know. But teams, even if you're making business decisions, are also trying to get on rosters for the next year. So there's a mix of that. You know. Yeah, you, but I mean, give them so hope. If you give them hope, they're. You're not you're not really playing a team here though that that uh that has all they're they're basically playing for spots on the team. Um, yeah. I right. mean they've they've it's, sat down some of the dudes. Yeah. I'm gonna give you a prime example of a game like this. You remember the Monday night game, Minnesota comes into Chicago and they're getting ready to make their playoff run and we take them to over we we kick their ass, they push us to overtime and our own mission do beats them deep. And the next year, what happened? I mean, these are momentum games for teams like this. So if you want to keep them crushed and keep their momentum crushed, it's you've got to go out and just take their heart. Yeah, definitely. We're going to have to shut down this kid. I mean, Gaines, Nick Mullins, he's come out balling a bit, man. Uh, Kids put up a lot of good numbers. Um, Just, you know, another guy on the roster with nothing to lose for them. Uh, What do you think about this kid and his recent success, man? I think it's honestly, I have I think it's pretty awesome. I think it's pretty awesome. Everybody dreams of that chance of getting in the game and doing their part, but only few are ready. So I respect any man that prepares for his craft. He prepared, He must be prepared for him like a starter because since week 13, he's leading the league in passing yards. I had a, I had a Tom Brady and company. And so we, yep. he's, a, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a fighter. He's a fighter. I'm not taking this team – This we're talking about San Fran now. I'm not taking this team lightly at all, um, regardless. Um, this guy, he's putting things on a dime. He's taking care. Of, he's attacking people's mistakes. The, the big games from last week, he's he's throwing the ball where safeties are falling down, so he can identify teams' weaknesses. And he's putting the ball on the money a little bit. And he 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 doesn't look scared to me. He doesn't look scared yeah. to me. Therefore, we cannot take this lightly. And I will. We we cannot. As Bears fans, we cannot. This is a team. Th- this is a team that's kind of like like us. They don't have the same results that we have, but they got a new regime. They got a good coach. Kyle Shanahan is a good coach. They know offense. They know how to scheme guys open. So this is um, – maybe they don't have all the pieces right now, but this is another good test for us. And yeah. I do think we should win this game. But um, we can't take this guy lightly. We need to go ahead and just, like, send, send the horses. Act, same thing, copy and paste. Attack from all sides. We cannot show weakness. Yeah, no so ho- but, but, but ho- hopefully we can get this game without Eddie Jackson. Because um, we've seen what Kittle and these guys and Clark has done all season long. He's a, yeah. he's go to his, he goes to his tight ends, which affect our safeties. 
And so we, if ja if Jackson is down, Bush and people have to come in company, have to just step up and play, play, um, play um, eyes on the ball. Yeah, without a doubt, man. I mean, you got this kid. He's got nothing to lose. Um, and now he's got like the the number one hands down best defense in the league coming into town, and he's trying to show that he's NFL caliber and, mm -hmm. and that these last couple of runs of games, uh, you know, are real. Uh, Diddy, what do you think, man? Like this kid, he's got his shot, and now he's going against the the Bears defense. I mean, it can't do nothing but fire this kid up. I don't think it really puts fear into a professional player. I think it puts the oh, if I ball out in this game, watch what happens. What do you think, man? Got a kid here trying to prove it. I mean, he looks like he's really grasping the offense. Like like O'Gain said, he's playing confident. Um, there were a couple timing issues I saw in the last game where they left two touchdowns on the field to Kittle. So I think I mean he's still getting used to the receivers, but I mean the kids the kids playing good and you, like like Gaines said you can't take them lightly. Yeah, man, he is. He's out there doing his thing. I mean, and they got some weapons. Uh, they do have they have a few weapons. Um, I mean, I know they lost players this year, but they have weapons that have done well this year. Uh, badge. I mean. Matt Breida, George Kittle, you know, just a few, man. What do, you, what do you think about these guys coming into this game? Yeah, dude, Breida, Breida's a, a phenomenal back. I uh, had him in fantasy a little bit this year. He had, he had a couple good games for me. Um, you know, he's kind of a little bit of a, a combination of a bruiser and a quick guy. Um, yeah. You know, he can take some shots, um, stay on his feet. You know, he, he's quick. He can break a long run. I mean, Kittle, Kittle, it, it, you know, uh, just one of those guys, man, that has the speed, uh, can run the seam route very well. Uh, just a fantastic player. And then they got guys like Dante Pettis, Marquise yep. Goodwin. I think mm -hmm. Marquise Goodwin goes unnoticed a little bit. Uh, uh, Kyle Juszczyk, I mean, is a fullback, but the way they use the fullback in San Francisco, I think is a lot a lot different than a lot of other teams. Um, so they, they it's a pro football. Guys, He's a they, pro football. Man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they have uh, Garrett Selleck as well as a backup tight end. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's another guy you really got to watch out for. The, you know, this team, Alfred Morris, too, is their backup running back. He, you know, he's been in the league a little bit, bounced around, you know, uh, since his days with the Redskins. But uh, it's a team that you, you certainly can't overlook. Yeah, definitely, man. And these dudes, I mean, they got a lot. They got good route runners, like yeah. they're wide receivers. They got a lot of good guys, guys that can cut routes and guys that run routes really well. Uh, breeda has got a couple touchdown catches. Kittle, obviously, we've talked about um, a lot of good route runners, a lot of guys to get there. Uh, I know we discussed the whole Robbie Gold. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys, I don't know if all you guys remember. I think me and Diddy were talking about it, but. Dude, last year before the damn Niners-Bears game, I put up a thing saying, uh, I mean, you guys can go back and check the receipts. Prior to the game, I was like, I have a feeling Robbie Gold is just going to come out and field goal after field goal, and we're going to lose this game to his leg. And that's exactly what fucking happened, man. Um, but then again, on the flip side, you got Robbie Gold stating that he's, you know, congratulated the Bears, and he can't wait for the first playoff game in Soldier Field because he's going to come cheer on the Bears team. Now, whether or not that's him setting himself up for a free agency bid next year, because he is a free agent at the end of this year, who knows? But uh, Diddy, I mean, Robbie Gold, what do you think, man? This dude going to come out and, and keep killing it or what? Yeah, man, I, I, I still think that was a, a major – that that was just a bad move, letting go Gold. Um He's 29 for 30 this year. He found, I know he was kind of playing not as good as he had previously, but the year, the, our, his last year here, he was 84%. Parky right now, 78.6. We just, yeah. we just really haven't replaced him. Even a bad Robbie Gold, which to his standards, he was, he was off a little bit at the end here. But I'd love to have him back, man. I, I know Jar was joking around on Twitter about, oh, if he's coming to the game, can we sign him? <laughs> yeah, it's like it, I mean. Uh, I just think that kid, I think Gold, I'm okay with Gold leaving Chicago when he left. I think he was in a slump, and that's what he needed was a change of environment. Um, let's not forget the Giants signed him, and he got cut from the Giants that year, too, for missing field goals. You're right. Um, I mean, now, granted, he's he might be the most accurate kicker and this and that, but those that was his slump year or, or year and a half, whatever, when he got cut by the Giants. Um, Even in his well, slump, though, he, he's better than what we have now. Well, okay, yeah, <laughs> um, but I get it. I'm just saying I don't think uh, the move at the time was something that we should look back on and say, 
you know, it was horrible for us. I think his change of environment is what sparked him back up and getting cut sometimes is what makes you recenter your craft and get back to doing what you're supposed to be doing. So we'll get to lost real quick, guys. In the fact that was Ryan Pace's like here comes a, a young GM and he has decisions to make. And yeah. you got you got a high price kicker who's missing kicks. And so a new GM with everybody looking at him get, makes not once he gets nervous, but makes an impromptu decision. I mean, and decides to move on. And so it is is this bad that the slump year came at the wrong time? Agreed. Agreed, and, man. And I think at that time there was a lot of uh, <clears throat> kind of a mentality of like, let's get the old regime out of here, you know, a little bit. And he was kind of he was kind of a part of that. He is a free agent in 2019, though. Yeah, he's a free I mean, agent at the end of the season. I mean, he can he can come, you know, they could definitely bring him back. And maybe he's angling for that. You know what I mean? With his, you know, I mean, obviously that everybody loves him. Good as gold. Joniak can't wait if, for him to get signed again. Yeah, let's move in. Let's let's go ahead and jump into this uh, San Francisco defense. This D line. I mean, Armstead, DeForest Bunkner, uh, Bunker. He's had a great year too. Um, Gaines, you think this is? I mean, granted, we sh- we shut down damn L.A. and I know anything could happen any given Sunday type deal. But I honestly think a couple of these D lines prepping into this uh, prior to getting into this playoff run. I mean, look at it. We had the Rams, then the Packers. Now we got San Fran. Then we got the Vikings. Those are some tough D lines to face prior to getting into this playoff run. And I think it played out perfectly, man. What, what's your thoughts on this D line that we're about to go up against? I mean, ever since the, the the Rams game, I'm not scared of any D-line. I'm not scared of any D-line, to tell you the truth. But at the same time, I'm not taking these guys lightly. The dude, but the, the young guy, Buckner, has like 11 sacks so far this season. And so if we can just – if if we stop him, everybody else will fall, in my opinion. But um, you got to remember, Solomon Thomas, that's Mitch's guy. That's Mitch's, like, rival from college. And so <laughs> I still, I still want to watch that matchup because – most of most of each other's on on their own highlight tapes. They're all in each other's rookie highlight tapes, and so it's pretty funny watching that college rivalry. So, but we we solidify we we isolate Buckner, which I believe we do. I just love how our line is playing right now. I love how our line is playing, and so. But that being said, San Francisco's not scared. <laughs> they're not scared, and th- this is a team that's they're, they're fighting for their coach. They're I mean not that they have to. It's just they're, they're fighting for each their, themselves and to beat a team to out physical. Um, Seattle says a lot, regardless. Yeah. Regard- so uh, after everything they're going through, not having all their pieces, they still beat the Seattle Seahawks. There's something to be said about that. And so yeah. they're they're not scared, so we can't lay down. We got to punch them in the face because the guy Buckner, Armstead, these guys, they're, they're coming after the ball, and these guys aren't scared to make tackles. They are like a Hicks of gold, but they, get off, they shed their blocks and make, um, make hit tackles. So we just got to be on our P's and Q's. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and the guys behind them aren't that bad either. I mean, you look at their linebacking core, uh, their their defense is led by a 22-year-old kid, Fred Warner, who leads their team in tackles. He was mic'd up like last week or two weeks ago. Uh, he's like, no shit, the spark of their defense, man. He's controlling things and moving them around uh, and making the calls. That is, as a 22-year-old third round, I think, from – I think it was a third round. Uh, I looked at it last night. Third rounder from BYU. Um, I mean, just straight impressive. Um, Diddy, I know you got a couple other linebackers in that you want to talk about, man. But what do you think about this team being like? This is a young defense led by by this kid, and and they're they're doing things, man. What's your thoughts? Uh, I think it's a great situation for the Niners, especially with all the Reuben Foster crap. You know, him stepping up and, and playing the way he's playing to really, really cover that gap for them. He's he's fast. He's got good coverage skills. Really solid tackler. And uh, like I said, he's really stepped up in the, the absence of uh, Foster. Um, and like you were saying, the uh, the other guy that really, that really stuck out to me in this game, I know the season he hasn't performed that great, but he was a seventh-round pick by the Vikings in 2017. And it's uh, Elijah Lee, number forty-seven. Kid was in on every play against the Seahawks, and uh, I think he's he, they have they have solid inside linebackers, man, and they're young and they're, they're out to prove themselves. Yeah, they are, man, and they're they're just a little nasty, you know. They bring a little nastiness to it. You can see the hype. Uh, you know, they're they're young kids. They're not like uh, you know 
complacent, I would say. They get in there, they, they wow. stick their they stick their head in there, they bring some big hits. Um I think it was that Seattle game. Warner came in, filled the hole on like a third and goal and just stuck him like straight in the backfield and and popped up, you know, and the whole celebration began. Uh, they're pretty impressive, man. Now, I mean, in my mindset, you, you look at this secondary, the secondary is the weakness of this team um, all the way around for me. I think um, they only have two picks this year. Granted, the ball doesn't always bounce your way, but only two picks and we're in week 16. Um, and over the last three games, they've given up seven touchdowns. Uh, the the first game they played against the Seahawks, they gave up like three three passing touchdowns in the first quarter, man. Um, I mean, Jared, this is a game that could be set up perfect for Mitch. Um, you know, an air oh, raid. Yeah. yeah, like we don't we don't have the air raid siren, but we can get in there with some <laughs> air raid, man. Uh, oh yeah, Simon. these. How, how do you see us going after these DBs and, and kind of showing out before uh, or during this game? I mean, well, I think if they sit back in a lazy zone, I think Mitch will have his opportunities to pick them apart. You know, it's going to be up to him to uh, get it done. Uh, I'd like to see us go deep. I, I say it. I think I say it, we should try it. We should throw more deep balls than we do right now. I'd like to see uh Balls Taylor, deep. Real. Let's go. Yeah, Pony goes balls deep, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that rolls. But I'd like to see Gabriel get a shot, and I wouldn't mind seeing Anthony Miller get a little slant. I'm so worked up right now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, AA? You think this is a – is this a game where we bring out some of these wide receivers? Like, you know, we bring out whims and, and uh, you know, or we dress them at least, and maybe if we get that early lead, we uh, kind of start to – you know, start to give our guys a little uh, a little rest and bring in whims and, and let Miller take, you know, a lot of snaps in that? Or is this just another game that you think we need to, uh, I mean, the weaknesses of DBs, let's, let's throw our starters at them and just fucking foot to the throat and go? Um, I mean, I, I kind of hope that what we're seeing is, is sort of things take shape. You know, I, like what I want to see this team become right now is Allen Robinson, Trey Burton, Taylor Gabriel as as, you know, that little receiver in the flat, the guy that comes out, runs the deep, you know, uh, seam route, that type of thing. And then you have Shaheen. And, and you know what? If Anthony Miller is a guy that only gets in for some, you know, some special plays and and some, you know, some that's OK, like. I really want to see Mitch continue to build this rhythm and this chemistry with Burton and Robinson and and these guys. I mean, those should be, you know, because because in the playoffs, I, I don't think we can be doing all this stuff where it's like we bring in a whole new position grouping and, you know, um, you know, all this, all these like kind of bells and whistles type of plays. Like we need to know where the ball's going. So, so to me, I feel like, um, I feel like Allen Robinson's going to have a big game. Uh, I feel like Trey Burton's going to have a big game. I think Taylor Gabriel is due to, to catch a deep ball. Um, you touched on it that San Francisco has given up They're They're near the bottom of the league in first quarter points allowed. Um, so, so that's something to look at. They're kind of in the middle of the pack defensively in all the other categories. They're like 12th in pass defense, 12th in run defense, you know, 12th in points allowed. Um, but that is one area where I think they can, they can be had is in the first quarter. So I look, at, look for us to come out, go deep, maybe to Robinson, maybe to Gabriel, um, you know, and, and I, let's just get our bread and butter going. Let's, you know. I, I mean, I, I think it's fun the way Nagy gets all these people involved, but, you know, I want to see, you know, Mitch and, and, and these guys develop, you know, this type of like chemistry, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. I think uh, I forgot. I was trying to look at it. I forgot who actually put it out there. So sorry, I can't give any credit for it, but it's definitely not mine. Um, but there was a stat kind of deal thrown out this week that uh, Allen Robinson has the the most yardage off of pass interference calls um, in the league. Like that basically he is the most interfered with wide receiver in the league that has drawn the most pass interference penalties uh, moving the ball downfield. Now, granted, those those yards don't get credited to the wide receiver. 
Um, so I think it's a, you know, one of those under the radar type things that really don't get looked at, but we're moving the ball downfield with going to AR and it's just mm-hmm. a lot of it doesn't, he doesn't get the credit for it because of, uh, cause the DBs can't keep the, they know they're beat and they can't keep their hands off of this dude. Um, last thing I got on this little piece here and it sucks to say, but I'm going to kick it over to badge and gains. Let's, uh, let's start with badge badge. Is this set up potential for a trap game or what, man? We've been down this road before. But it's over now, <laughs> god damn it. This ain't no <laughs> fucking trap game. It's an <laughs> NFC division chance, baby. That is no, awesome. Motherfucker. Boom! Yeah, it's over now. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, I'm pumped. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Gaines? What do you think the deal is? No, I don't. I don't. It has a potential for it, but I just think that I just think we're all. I think we're we're operating on all cylinders, and I think we're going to see finally see another game on that we're going to operate on all aspects of the game. It, it does have the potential for a trap game because they are a feisty team, but I just yeah. feel like the our, our mojo right, the, the the type of leadership that we have in place and the structure of um of, of our positive growth is too intact. And the, the, the brotherhood and the unity, I just feel like we're operating at a different level right now. So if, if it's up to us to just do to be us. They just happen to be on our way. So sorry, I'm not sorry. <laughs> you and, and I, T-Y. Just to bring up one, one guy we didn't talk about, we, our special teams need to be put on notice. This kid, Ricky James, is a very explosive kick returner. And yes, you got you got to got to keep your eye on him today. Or sorry, I'm Ricky tomorrow, James, but, bitch. Yeah, that's I'm Ricky dude. James, I thought bitch. I was thinking of that when I saw when I saw his name. I'm like, yep. Unity. Yep. <laughs> Unity. And then also another. Let thing. that dude be putting his feet on our couch. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he's just nasty. They they need to bring their A game. Another thing to keep an eye on is: Did you notice the field conditions at Levi Stadium? They resotted the center of the field. No, uh, you're talking about. You now we used to talk about Soldier Field slip counts. Uh, I think yeah. that's going to be something that we're going to have to keep an eye on too. There, because their field looks like crap. Garbage. <laughs> What's that? AA? What do you think about the 49ers, AA? Garbage. <laughs> what do you think about hey, the one thing, Garbage. One thing I, one thing I kind of <laughs> wish would have been set up a little different, but unfortunately it's not. Uh, the teams that we need to lose, we all have the late game this week. Uh, the Saints have the late game, the Rams have the late game, and obviously we have the late game. Uh, late as in the you know the afternoon game, not the morning game. Um, granted, I guess it could be good, but it's, you know, it's also bad in the fact that I think there's a little added fire. If you, if the, uh, you see the damn Rams come out and lose in the morning game and now it's your turn to go and you know, you lock this thing up and, and there you go. But, uh, I don't know. What's your guys thoughts on that? You think that they even pay attention to that or you think it's just like, let's just go out and win this game and go. Just win baby. That's it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's- I think Badge is right, man. You, you got to play it. It, it. Not knowing what's going on with the other games, you just got to come out and play to win and yeah. let everything else take care of itself. I, I think it'll definitely be something that they're looking at, though. If they, they have a little uh, NFL scoreboard out there going on, I think it's something that they're, they're paying attention to. Definitely. And right, I'm, get I'm, of, Go I'm of the thought that you want to play for that buy round. I don't care how we came out previously in our buys. The health – Time, these guys need time to heal. And if you can give them a week off, I say you got to go balls out for it. Uh, definitely. I'm, I, I'm, I'm in the same way. I mean, if you aren't really want to look at it, we're at the 20th game of the season. I mean, you add the preseason, we're at the 20th game of the season right now. That's a lot of damn games. That's a lot of contact. That's a lot of time that you need, you know, to lick your wounds and, and kind of heal. Um, if we catch the bye... I'm good with it, even though I kind of want to see him play. You know, <laughs> like we all live for Bears games, but uh, you catch the bye. I think it's something good that we got going, uh, and and definitely better to have somebody come into our house where we've only dropped one game this year than to. Uh, I know they say defense travels and whatever; those are all just fucking cliche type deals. I would rather somebody come to our house and play and bring this thing into Chicago like that. Um, and in the spirit of Christmas, let's deliver a Bears win. That'd be yeah. all right. Damn sure. <laughs> now, let's get into our offense. Diddy, I know we said, Mitch, you know, it's got a high probability to have a, have a big passing game. Um, 
is this a good, you know, playoff prep game for Mitch uh, to come out here and, and, and build on this momentum and, you know, maybe have another, you know, big, big throwing game? Or is this, do you think it just really doesn't matter how, whenever this game is played and over, that's it, it's over? I, th- I think Mitch, it would be great for Mitch to have a huge passing game and you build that confidence back up. It's been a while since he's had, like, aired it out. Um, I, I think getting that, that, the deep passing game going to tomorrow would, would be awesome, um, especially for his confidence. There could be times in the playoffs we need him to to do that. So just to get that chemistry going again with the, with the deep passing game, and I think a big passing game for Mitch would be huge. Okay. What about the ground attack, gangs? So let's, uh, let's, let's move this thing around a little bit. Ground attack. You come in, you think that's the same mentality as last week with the balanced offense of passing and, and running, or – we go on heavy ground attack, you know. No. What's your thoughts and game plan on this one? If, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And yeah. so, um, keep 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 them keep them on them heels. There's no reason to pretend to be anybody. We're not the same bears we were before. We keep saying that, so we have to accept that and embody that. Nagy's doing a great job of keeping defensive coordinators guessing. And so, um, as long as Mitch takes what the defense gives, that's all we need. That we need to be to be successful. We don't need to force anything. We just they're scared of us, guys. <laughs> they're scared of us. We have we have wide receivers that can run great routes. We have Josh Bellamy who can catch. I mean, so from the depth, from depth, <laughs> depth chart up, man, it's looking pretty good. And so we just have to continue to have faith in each other and then just execute. This is about execution. I don't think anybody can stop us besides us. Everything that Mitch has done this season is correctable on him. And so yeah. nobody's taking away things that we do good. We have too many weapons. We're too versatile. I think we uh, we have the, we have the potential growth to be the best team in the NFL, and the reason why I have so many Pro Bowlers guys because we made do on having all these net national games. On these national games, we start to show up, so more people are seeing us. And here we go again, another four o'clock game. So the West Coast is about to get some more action of us. Guess guess who else is going to be watching? All the Raider fans are going to be watching too, and so yeah. they're going to get to see Khalil Mack live again. And so we're going to execute. And um, don't switch it up. No, whatever whatever happens, I can see every single game is a Jordan Howard game for me because I feel like he's that kind of back. And so just take over where we need to. Jordan Howard kept just as dangerous as catching a ball with a full head of steam. Get, let Jordan Howard get a, get a good screen. He's gone. He's gone for at least 20 or 30 because he, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to go down. And if he gets to the second level, he can't take it off. Yeah. Dude, and like you were saying, like the only team that can beat us is us. I was uh... – one of the shows I was listening to this week was talking the players were talking and they were saying how, you know, post game, like the next day or whatever, they get their little uh, grade sheet of how they did during the game. And the, the worst thing to see on a grade sheet is M E and it'll give you your, uh, you know, your plays or whatever and, and the breakdown of plays. And then it'll say like, you know, Mitch Trubisky M E. And that's just a straight up mental error on the player where the coaches turned around and said, no, everything was perfect. And, and you had a mental error. Um, the players were saying how that's like, like one of the, like the worst things for you to see on your grade sheet is ME. You would rather see, you know, something else or whatever. But when you get those MEs on the grade sheets, you know, that it was straight on you. And that at the beginning of the year, they were seeing some of these MEs and, and getting in that tape room and, and seeing all these me's on a paper means that like you need to be in the tape room looking and and seeing what you're missing and and finding out how to break it down and then how throughout the year these MEs have been dropping off and these guys have been uh doing what they needed to do I thought that was a big a a nice piece to hear about from the outside perspective that uh we really don't get to see a lot of that's awesome man I have a I have a feeling like this game's gonna feel a lot like our uh game against the Rams as far as how we attack great, good defensive linemen. Okay. Linebackers two good linebackers. Yeah. Test their DBs. Um, keep your, keep the pass rush off balance by running it at Buckner and those guys and being physical with the line. You know what I'm saying? I, that's just a, it's just kind of the feeling I've got about it right now. Dude, speaking with that, I'm, I'm, I'll roll right into this. Speaking about being physical with the line, uh, Kyle Long, he's practicing again. He's back in practice. He's probable for the game. Um, AA, if Kyle Long's healthy, man, do you get him in there sooner rather than later, or do you kind of uh, 
you think that you just you wait this one out since we're already playoff bound? I mean, if he stacks up practices, I think you got to get him in the week seventeen somewhat. I don't, obviously, I don't think he's playing this week, but I think you got to get him in there and get <clears throat> get his juices flowing a little bit. Um, and I mean, that's that's just huge if he comes back. That guy does so much from a comp, from a communication standpoint and just a leadership standpoint. And he's also just that big nasty in the running game that we need, you know, um, and, and, you know, he's just, he's just, he's just mixing it up. I mean, I love Kyle Long, man. That guy gets a lot of crap, but he's been the heart and soul of some bad teams, you know? Yeah. Um, I look at some <laughs> of these guys like Kyle Long and Adrian Amos and, and Akeem Hicks and some of these dudes that have been here through some terrible teams and they still showed up and they still played every week. And Kyle Long is just a warrior, man. So I think him coming back is, is huge. Um, and I think I just think, you know, to kind of go back to, to Mitch a little bit is that he's got to stack another game. He has not had a, a two really good games in a row as of yet. Um, it's kind of one up, one down, um, yeah. you know, throughout the season. So I, I think he's got to have this is this is the time where you got to start stacking these games. You know, he doesn't have to have, throw four touchdowns. He needs to have another game like he had last week. You know where he's where he's confident, he's calm, he's not giving the ball away, and he's you know he makes the plays when the plays need to be made. And I have every confidence that he's going to do that. Uh, you know, I think people talk about a letdown game as if the other team has nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? The other half of a letdown game is the other team stepping up. You know, yeah. so you know, um, and the, you know, 49ers have won two games in a row, um, so they need to. Um, you know, but I, I just, I think, I think that this team is not necessarily let down proof, but I think there's a lot of guys on this team that, that are, that are working every day to fight against that mentality. So I don't think that's going to happen, but I do think this game is going to be close. I don't, you know, I've seen some people saying that the bears are just going to stomp them out. And I, I don't really see that. Back to Kyle Long though, like what running game have we got going with him in? We had our best running performance without him in. Um, I think ultimately it's up to Harry. I mean, I think Kyle's Kyle's damaged goods in a sense. He's been beaten up through the years. I, I think if to get him back in and get that chemistry flowing, I hope it works out. But I, I don't think I don't think we've noticed the loss of Kyle as bad as I thought we were going to. Here's guys, the thing with oh my god, did he go? Ahead. No, go ahead, man. I, I just want to say, he's not eligible yet to, to even play this week he can't come off of ir until next week so he he's just practicing right now he he, he can't play until next week so you know and, and, and to your point diddy you're right man like when he was in we we weren't really doing a whole hell of a lot in the run game you know it's it's been you know these other guys that have stepped up you know could it be because he was playing hurt before that i mean he's had injuries galore since he's been here so of course that's an option um but, you know, I don't know if I if I would put him in next week. I, I think we're better off, uh, you know, getting through next week in the, in the Minnesota game. Uh, we've got guys that are playing really well right now as a group. You know, sometimes switching that up, you know, can be a yeah. bad thing. I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't think that would be an issue because, you know, honestly – Really, it's been just the last two weeks that they've really played cohesively, you know. So, yeah, throwing him back in, I don't, I don't think it's a huge deal. But let's just make sure he's healthy enough to be out there. I, I, I think, think, I think we take the if we take the lead or we got a little comfortable lead, putting him on on a couple snap counts and getting him in for the feel and getting him, you know, a couple plays here and there to uh, to get back in the feel of the game. Because I mean, he's been out a while, man, and it's it's not like you can just step back in and jump back in. And that's definitely not something you want. He's not at a skill position to where you can do that without seeing much of a difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think think getting him on a snap and doing it that way is a smart move. Longer Witzman. Long. Long. Every day of the week. But I'm just saying I would not – I would rather have Long at game 16 where he's played than Long at no – missing the last eight games and not and just coming in there and going straight at it right but i i just i think it, the, to, to diddy's point about him not doing much the, the whole offensive line was was questionable in the beginning of the year i mean yeah yeah th- they were they were shuffling guys in and out you know daniels couldn't even you know they wouldn't let him stay on the field you had kush 
you know, uh, in a rotation. Um, you know, it was it was all wacky. I mean, so <laughs> I, I don't, I, I, you know, the beginning of the year, I don't think they had a chance to to figure anything out yet, and I don't think Kyle. You know, I think Kyle didn't get a chance. I mean, I will say about Kyle is that he was on some terrible offensive lines, and he was the reason why Jordan Howard had some of the seasons that he had to even be in the conversation of being a quote unquote elite back. You know, so I'm a little bit of a Kyle Long stan, especially because he gets a lot of crap from Bears fans on Twitter, partially because he responds to a lot of it. But yeah, because he doesn't take shit. No, he doesn't take shit. But this guy, I mean, this guy has given his body to this team and, you know, and, and, and shows up and played on some terrible teams, you know. And so, I mean, I, I think I'm never a guy that says, you know, that you just give a guy uh, a, a, a position back just because he's back. But I mean, this guy, you know, and from what I hear from behind the scenes, he's still He's still in every meeting. He's been there. He's making the trips. He's still. Oh, he meets him in the tunnel after every game too. He's yeah. like standing right outside the tunnel, waiting to like this guy's hug a, his boys and celebrate yeah. a victory, man. Like he's he's earned a right to to be a part of what's going on right now. And yeah. personally, I, you know, when I heard that there's a chance that he could play this season, I was excited, man. I was like, I, yes, I was shocked. Like this, yeah, and and it goes to show you that he's he's working. You know what I mean? He's he's yeah. been working to get back because he he wants to see the fruits of all his toiling on these shitty ass teams, you know, prior to this. And so, I mean, I, I really hope he does get back in the game and, you know, I want to see, you know, I want to see him at the mountaintop. I just don't want him in if he's a liability and I get the warm and fuzzies and the, the Kyle Long's a beast and he was a great player on some junkie bears teams, but if he's not ready, I don't want him on the field just because he's Kyle Long. Right, but yeah, I just don't – when has he been a liability? I mean, and when – or when has he been the guy that's making he, up garbage he, around him? Garbage. Garbage. He has, I, I don't, when's the last time he was actually, like, healthy? It's been I mean, a while. He's played he, – he played most of the last couple seasons. Injured, yeah. Yeah, but injured. he played, and he still played better than fucking with. Oh, yeah. right, last, I mean, he, you know, he stacked up three seasons, and then he missed eight games. I don't know. At the end of the day, I, I, it warm fuzzies. Call it whatever you fucking want. That guy's that guy's a heart and soul type of guy. That's this 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 team is as much about emotion and confidence and all that shit. I want that guy back out there. That's all. I want him suited up. I want him out there. I want him getting in people's faces when they when they fuck with Mitch. <laughs> and, you know, I, I want I want Kyle Long doing what he does and, and you know, whatever. Like, if, if he's not a dominant guy anymore, okay, fine. You know, but he's still dominant in the heart department. Yeah. All right, let's close out this offense with one last thing over to beat Diddy. Dids, you think uh, Nagy's saving anything here? Is, he, uh, there, is there some stuff that we're going to see changing up? Uh, these next couple weeks or into the playoffs, has he got some uh, some tricks up his sleeve still or what? I don't think Nagy's really tapped in too deeply to everything he does have. I think he's been trying to just keep it watered down for Mitch to kind of just grasp the offense this year. I think there's still a lot left in the bag. And um, I think there's definitely a lot of things he's saving for the playoffs. I just, I mean, they, I've heard commentary on it that, you know, he's just, keep, he's just keeping it a little simple right now. There's a lot more, what they say, five years for Smith to fully grasp this offense. Yeah, there's a lot to it, and um, he, I don't think he's come close to unveiling what, what's behind the curtain. Man, I'm excited for that to come. I mean, really, I think it's. I wouldn't. I don't know if I would say the offense is is dumbed down in that term. And I know I'm. I'm not saying that you meant it like totally that way, but I said watered down. I'm not, I'm not yeah, dumbed I down. Think, I, said, I, I think <laughs> it's just a. I think it's a stepping a stepping stone offense. Like you don't get in and learn everything right away, right? You learn part A, then you step to part B, then C, and then D, you know, and you continue to grow throughout the way that the, the playbook's designed and the way that these plays are designed. And um, so I wouldn't say that it's that it's taking away purposely because he can't grasp it. I think it's a building aspect, and we're just not built to the top yet. Um, all right, let's wrap up that offense. Let's move into this defense. It's defense time, boys. You know, we got the pressure coming. Uh, Gains, big pressure time, man. Like, we can get after this offensive line. They've given up some sacks. They're, you know, they got this kid back there. He's new. He's trying to 
trying to prove something. You see this, uh, you know, this Bears defense just straight dominating this offensive line or what, man? Big Gaines isn't oh, back yet. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> he, he came off a of mute. I thought he was back already. All right. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and take that one. I, th- I mean, I, I think I think we have to get pressure. I think you have to pressure Nick Mullins. I mean, I think you have to make this this kid beat you. Um, wh- you know, why wouldn't you? Um, I mean, I think Khalil Mack is is rolling right now. Uh, I think Leonard Floyd has is playing with so much confidence. Um, and you know, you you see him doing the discount double check at the end of that game. It was a subtle one. It wasn't yeah. too crazy, but he, you know, he threw Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know, down and he got up and he, and he tapped his wrist like it's our time now. And he threw a little double check, you know, like, that's right. You know, we're, we're on the clock now. And, and that's cool to see, man. He's, he's playing with a lot of confidence and, you know, so yeah, they're going to get, I think they're going to bring pressure on him. Um, I think they're going to make him, make him make plays and why wouldn't you? They're going to treat him like the Giants treated uh, Chase Daniel. You know, yeah. make this guy make this guy beat you. Uh, and and I haven't watched a ton of Mullins, but I've watched a little bit. And he definitely is a gunslinger. You know, he 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 makes some risky throws. So I think we can get some. Um, I think Kyle Fuller is is going to get some picks. I like Badge's uh, prediction about um, you know about AA. Amos. About your so. brother AA. Yep, my brother AA. Yo, by the way. Greg Braggs is out there meeting Anthony Anderson at the game and calling this dude double A. I had to give Greg Braggs a little shit because he's on Twitter like, oh, I met Anthony Anderson. So great to meet double A. And I'm like, hold the phone, Braggs. There's only one double A that you know. I God saw damn it. it. <laughs> like, this was funny. Like, all of a sudden, we're going to get some celebrities showing up at the games, right? Like, like you know, come out of the woodwork. Like, I was always a, uh, I was always a Bears fan. Like, yeah, get the fuck no. out of here. Number one, <laughs> I'm double A. Number two, get it, get it right, Mayor Braggs. <laughs> <laughs> the second A in his name needs to be lowercased. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Jerry, what do you think, man? I know, I know AA hit on, on Floyd and that. You see these guys, uh, we got these Pro Bowl selectees, you know, and alternates coming out playing this week. Is there an added little pep in their step from being um, being selected or from being uh, snubbed that you think that these guys come out playing even harder? Oh, I think there's a little fire fire in that belly. I think those guys want to show out. You know, I think we talked about it last week. Nobody wants to be the reason that something fails. Everybody wants to be a part of the reason why it succeeds. And uh, I think you're going to see that. I think a big thing with – the linebacking core. I mean, that's we've got. They run a lot of play action, and when their linebackers, when other linebackers bite, that's where Mullins does some damage at. So, I don't think we're going to have that problem. I think we're going to be all right because usually our defensive front kind of takes care of that, and our linebackers don't have to bite. So, I, I, I completely can see our linebackers coming out and just being pissy about it and just being nasty and. Throw an extra little shove in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. What about you, Diddy? What do you think, man? The snubs, the guys who feel like Goldman, they, they feel that they got snubbed. Do they come out to prove that uh, they should be at the Pro Bowl or what? I definitely think they will. Um, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be interesting from, I know you asked about the trap game earlier. I think it's going to be interesting yeah. to see these guys coming off these Pro Bowl nods, coming off NFC North Championship. To how they respond afterwards, and I, uh, you know, don't want them going in there with big heads and thinking this is just a game they can just, they're going to win because they're the Bears. Yeah. Um, I think I think this will be very interesting to uh, to see how they respond to that. But I definitely think the guys that feel slighted are definitely going to have a chip on their shoulder going forward, and that that's that's not a bad thing. You know, I I know I didn't have this out, out there, but let's uh, I'm gonna I'll, I'll just keep it with you, dudes. Damn Floyd. So Floyd got, you know, he got the alternate route, whatever. Um, there's both sides of the fence played on this guy saying either, you know, bust or whatever. Um, a lot at the beginning of the year was saying get rid of him. Uh, now people are saying keep him. Do, do you think Pace executes the fifth year option on this dude now? I do. He's shown flashes. Um, I, I definitely think they should give him, give him another uh, year. I think you'll definitely see Pace do that. 
Anybody, anybody think that we should not? The only way you don't is if there's somebody else out there that's going to, you know, no. you think is better. I mean, and, yeah, and, and, and he's better than him right now. Yeah, I, I just don't see it. Okay. I just wanted to see. I've, I've just thought about it and like, well, yeah, he's on his contract year. It's fifth year option would be, have to be executed. Uh, so, you know, kind of thinking about do we give this? Because I know we were trying to ch- trade this dude away at the beginning of the season. We were saying we'd take a six rounder for him and shit. Um, just because of the way that he came out, lackluster, club on the hand, wasn't moving, wasn't getting after it. Um, but anyway, He's working back, hard, man. I, he really is. He is He's working, working hard. really hard. Yeah. yeah. But back to, back to the switch sense. flipped with him. Yeah, you're right. And I don't know if it's more of Mac teaching him and or more of just he's finally found that fire and feels healthy and he's ready to go. Uh, Bad, do you expect another big turnover day from this defense and just to po- keep piling on those interceptions and sacks? Yeah, let's put it this way. I mean, you look at Mullins' stats in six games, he's 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 got six picks, so that's a pick a game. Uh, you know, um, we only got Rodgers for one last week, so uh, I'm expecting multiple here. My guy, Adrian Amos, man, I, I definitely think he's going to get one. And, uh, you know, um, I wouldn't be surprised, man, to see uh, Roquan tack on another one as well, man. Uh, I just, there, you know, Mullins is going to be looking to Kittle a lot. I just think uh, Roquan, maybe Danny, uh, either one of them grabs one, grabs one too. And I think Amos returns his for a TD. Nice. Mm. Uh, so last thing I got on this defense for you guys, man, um, we get out, say we get out, we turn some of these turnovers into touchdowns. We get out to a lead. Uh, I'm going to come around the room on this one. You guys, we, we take a lead. Do you start to rest up this defense at all? Or do you let them just keep on running uh, and going with things? Um, let's start with you. Eh? Sorry, say that question one more time. Yes. Do you think uh, if we get out to a, a you know a, a lead on these guys and uh, we're putting them away, yeah. do we uh, do you start resting this defense through these last two games no. and, and shuffling guys around, or you just keep the, the I don't the think uh, no, I don't think so. I think they got to keep playing the way they're playing. I think I think they have to keep flying around. They have to keep uh, they 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 can't switch up. You know, right now, I think I think. Um, yeah, I think that'd be. A, I don't think that's in Nagy's nature necessarily, um, unless you know. I mean, if there's guys that come off the field and they're limping and whatever, maybe you don't want to force them back out there, that kind of thing. But I, I don't see, I don't see us resting guys unless there's absolutely no chance for different playoff seating or you know anything like that. I think that if if for some reason it does come down to that and we can't do anything in week seventeen, I think yeah. they do rest guys. But no, I think I think you keep keep it rolling. Uh, what about you, Badge? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think if we get a big lead, absolutely. Um, but you know, I think if it's a tight game, man, then I I don't I you know you you want to win these games. I I know that you know obviously I said I don't I don't want to buy, but. You want to go into the playoffs whether you have a buy or not with momentum. And, you know, as long as you control your own destiny, you'll do that. And I think, you know, if it's a close game, they're, they're going to leave the starters in to, to win the game. And, and, and that's yeah, what they should do. Yeah, I think we're all – maybe I, w- I don't even really have to go around the room on this one. I think we're all under the same perspective that if it's a blowout, sure, get – you know, maybe, you know – give this guy a breather here and this guy a breather there, but don't mess with the continuity of the defense and uh, actually sit people. Are we all tracking on the same page there or what? Pretty much. Absolutely. I got, I got a question for you. Do you, What's up? do you, do you set people down on offense? Do you set Mitch down if we're up big? Absolutely. No. If we're no. up, like how, how big are we talking? Yeah, how, like big? how big are you talking about? Say if we're, we're up the fourth, 31 to 10. Fourth quarter by up, up 28. Then yeah, I'm sitting Mitch down. Yeah, and I'm not even I'm not even putting damn uh, what's his name in. I'm putting damn Bray in there to fucking play around. Um, yeah, I would agree with that too. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not putting Chase in. I'm putting I'm putting Bray in to, to do his thing, and and I'm making this a no shit B team offense. I'm sitting damn everybody. I'm I'm going Miller. Miller's going to be my top receiver. 
and um, Cunningham and Mazzella are going to be my backs. Everybody else is going to be chilling, laughing, singing Kumbaya on the fucking sidelines together. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it gets that far. I don't think it gets that far. And we should want Mitch to get as many reps as possible, looking at multiple as many defensive looks as possible. But yeah. the, the way, but the way, the way we've been doing the Wildcat and stuff, we always have the clock ticking too. And so um, we, we always have, we always have the, the the ball, the ball movement. And so between Howard and Cohen and Mazzell, I mean, we're doing, we're, or Mitch running the ball for that matter. I mean, for some reason, and if not, the, and if it's that much of a blowout, the other team is running the clock out. And so I just don't want to think about things like Mitch coming out. We don't want to, we're not there yet, guys. We, we're going for the number one seed. We're going, we're not just content with just getting in with the, with the um, NFC North title. We're going for the number one seed. And so, I mean, I know we're talking about blowouts, but we should just be thinking about like him in Minnesota. Many reps as possible. But this is about getting playoff ready. We can't just be happy that we made the playoffs. We got to yeah. go and ready to win this shit. So let's get as many reps as possible, many looks as possible, because we still got a young quarterback who's having his first, you know what I'm saying, first full start to the whole season. Why do we want don't take away reps from the man? Yeah, my, my only thing is if we're up 28 and and we have yeah, a fucking 28 in the fourth, 20 in the fourth, yeah, 20 in the fourth. And yeah. we have and we have a big injury, there's gonna be a lot of fucking explosion. Yeah. Then just run yeah. the ball then. Just run the damn ball. Yeah, yeah, you're right. All right, man, let's move on to these game predictions and wrap this thing up. We're going to do game predictions. We're going to do shout outs. Then we're going to wrap this thing up and get out of here on this, uh, you know, fabulous morning. Get this thing posted for you guys. I uh, changed up game predictions a little bit because fuck the Packers. They're gone. <laughs> um, let's talk about the ones that actually make sense and, and mean something to us. Uh, we'll kick this thing around the room, find out who you guys got. Uh, let's start this off with B. Diddy. Rams at Cardinals. Who are you taking? The Rams. The Rams. Is I want the Cardinals, right? but yeah. yeah. Anybody not taking the Rams? I'll take the Cardinals. Okay. I'll take, I'll take them. Like see. Dang, uh, pretty, the cards. pretty interesting, though. The Rams signed C.J. Anderson. And Rams are, you know, Rams are in disarray. I don't think they're going to lose this game, but I think the Rams are looking around like uh, – you know what happened because they haven't been the same since they played here. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know, but saying Gurley a game time decision. Booger was right. Somebody got exposed, and it was the Rams. <laughs> yeah, it was the <laughs> damn Rams. Captain yeah. uh, Todd, uh, you know what's his face? Uh, the Jared Goff don't look so good when that play action is not working. Yeah, no shit, hundred percent, man. All right, so everybody's got the Rams except for Gaines. He took the Cardinals. Let's roll the Steelers and Saints. Mm. Uh, Gaines, who you got? Steelers. I'm taking wow. the Steelers. I'm taking the Steelers also in this game. Um, Jer, who you got? As much as I want to see the Steelers win, I think the Saints are too much for them. All right. I think. Uh, nope. Whatever. Go ahead. I already told you what I thought. Um, I was going to go, <laughs> I was gonna go into a spiel about why I think they're going to win, but I'm not even going to go down that road. Uh, AA, who you got? I think I got the Saints. I think nobody's nobody's talking about how good the Saints defense is playing lately. They've been turning the ball over. They've been getting uh, sacks. Um, I don't trust the Steelers on the road, period, ever, ever. Yeah. I don't trust the Steelers on the road. I think the Saints. Diddy, Sands, who you got? Diddy? Diddy. Okay, I heard it that time. Yeah, um, <laughs> this, this, uh, the uh, – I, th- I think the Steelers, uh, with Ben banged up, Connor banged up, you, you got to go with the Saints. Okay. Badge, who you got? I- I'm I'm riding with the Steelers. I just think uh, yeah, but- Big Ben has uh, that that shit Cam Hayward was talking. Or no, j- no, what's his face? Jordan, Cam- Jordan Cameron. Cameron. Yeah, yeah, talking shit, saying Ben isn't a Hall of Famer and, and this, that, and the other thing. So I think Ben's uh, going to stuff it down his fucking throat. Yeah, and I also think I mean, on, the, on the back side of that, I think Antonio Brown getting snubbed is a big thing, too. The yep, thing is, absolutely. badge, badge. Yeah. Big Ben would do that, though. <laughs> yeah, he would. Uh, that's a true statement. And there it is. <laughs> All right, Vikings Vikings oh, and Lions. Viking and Vikings, Lions. Anybody taking the Lions? I am. I'm taking the Lions. Hell, Real okay. same. Yep. Bad. Vikings. Hey, hey. Interesting. Yeah. I, I think the Vikings yeah. take a shit. I, I want. I, I'm rooting for the Lions so hard to end the Viking season. Yep. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just. I just feel like the Vikings are gonna take a shit. 
Teams all right, who's then. late. So we got Badge AA yeah. and Jer are all taking the damn the Lions, right? Yep. All right, I just want to make sure we didn't, you know, miss anybody on, on a little lie down thing. Uh, all right, last one. Anybody taking the Niners? Very well. Let's continue this. <laughs> <laughs> Although, uh, I will say, if you get the Niners um, getting four points, that might not be a bad idea. That's yeah. what Mike North did. Yeah, I mean, the Bears are only the Bears are only picked to win this game by four, so. I don't know. I mean, it's a thing. But uh, those are our predictions. We're going to roll into Mike's predictions. We'll drop Mike Norris' predictions in here. And uh, for you guys to hear who Mike's top four are, you know, you already know who Mike is. If you don't, you don't like money. Uh, it's just that simple. You don't know who Mike North is. You ain't liking money with his predictions this year and the way that he's been uh, calling these games. So let's go ahead and drop that. Thank you. Um, Dolphins minus four versus the Jaguars. Okay, you're like all ten. But you know what? But the Dolphins, to me, seem like a cinch, right? Mm -hmm. They've seemed like that all year long. And yet, I see where the Jaguars, uh, who everybody's abandoned, including me, Vegas is, if there's a couple teams that have killed me this year, it's the Bengals, the Lions, and these Jags, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but I'm going to take the Jaguars plus the four against the Miami Dolphins and the Sunshine State rivalry, okay? Now, I got to tell people that Mark Potash picked the Dolphins, so this is a big one. Yes, yes, and you know what? Once again, Eldo and I, Implore the Chicago Sun Times Sports Department to do a story on the two of us. Maybe get a side bet going. Throw the Bears bar room in there, and the Sun Times gets a lot of play. Maybe we have Mark on next week. Hope we'll we'll tag Mark on this because you know what? When I do that, when I say mentions and I put people's names, they're forced to listen because they don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So they got to hear it. That's right. Okay. What's he gonna say about me? My little goo. He's seen me play. He knows I can play that gutters type of game. Okay. Jaguars got plus sharp the elbows. Versus the Dolphins. Okay, here, take it easy. Don't agree so fast. Falcons minus the three at the Panthers. Okay, here's here's the way I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. The Panthers are getting three. They should be getting twenty. The way I feel about them right now. Cam Newton and and I, my brother just moved out to Carolina, and uh, I talked to him this week. And I, he says, boy, the Panthers suck. I go, it even hurts me that you're even bringing that up. You lived in Chicago your whole life. You lived there. Now you're living in Carolina after a year, and I got to hear about the Panthers. But I will tell you, you're right. Here's what I said to him. And here's the worst part. This is a Super Bowl quarterback, right? Cam Newton? Mm-hmm. Am I supposed to be saying they're stuck with him? Because that's what it looks like right now. They're stuck with him. And they're not going to play him this week. Right. But he's going to be available if there's an injury or if they still have a shot at the playoffs. I'm sorry. <laughs> if they win this week, I'm not letting him play. <laughs> if they have a shot for the playoffs, right? Yeah. Go with the guy that got you there because he's killed him. Mm -hmm. I bet the game. That being said, <laughs> Atlanta... <laughs> Seriously, with Matty Ice and everybody, should they only be three-point favorites, folks? Yeah. Against a team where the coach Rivera should be probably fired at the end of the year. And I love Ronnie. I love Ronnie. Yeah, he's Worked a great with guy. with Ronnie at the score. Great guy. Mm -hmm. And I hope he doesn't get fired. I love his wife. I love the family. Good for them. I'm so proud of him. I remember he had to volunteer to work for Wanstead. <laughs> they wouldn't even pay him. <laughs> But he did the right thing, and look where he's at. Yep. Okay? Um, I'm taking the Panthers. Yep. I'm taking the Panthers. This is a Rivera, a, a Riverboat Run game. I'm taking the Panthers plus the three. Okay? All right, got it. Now, Cowboys minus seven versus Buccaneers. All right, you know what? The Buccaneers, I've been to the rodeo with them. I heard uh, uh, Jimbo Fisher say uh, Jameis Winston's the greatest deep ball thrower he ever had been around. What? Um, that's what he said. Oh, my gosh. That's what this moron said. <laughs> but, yeah. This guy was dancing on cafeteria tables, you know. 
<laughs> but, but here, but there's, but you know what's funny? In the NFL, that's only ten percent of your throws. <laughs> if that, yeah, that's only ten percent of your throws, you moron. <laughs> Everything. What he has trouble making is the short throws. <laughs> Anything. And you know what? I'm taking the Cowboys. They're down on deck. They're down on everybody over there. They're panicking. If there's a fan base that's panicking right now, as good as Dallas, I think who will be this week. Here's what they load Zeke up, run them to death, and they'll cover that game. So I got the Jaguars, the Panthers, and the Cowboys. My last game, Steelers. They beat the Patriots. I think people think they're on the right track. And they are. Mm -hmm. And I think people think that the Saints are on the wrong track. Mm -hmm. And they're not. I've been hearing people say Drew Brees should be MVP. Well, this is the game he's got to show everybody. Yep. If they knock out the the Steelers by 10 or more, he's your MVP, baby. Yeah, that's a good of point. The Football League. Would you agree? I would agree. That game is in New Orleans. The Saints are giving away five and a half, and you're telling us to pick the Saints. Yeah, but unfortunately, i got to say that Sylvie's got them with me. Yeah, um, he sure does. And Potash has the Cowboys with me, and he Sylvie's sure does. got the Panthers with me. The only game I really have that they don't uh, agree with me on is the Jaguars. Right. So, that, that but is... last week I started out 0-2, and I came back. Look, I got a one-run, I got a one-point lead. One game lead on him. I need two, at least a two and two week. Yeah. Period. You need no matter what happens. And the last thing I want to see, and I'm competitive. I love Mark. Mm -hmm. Last thing I want to see is next Friday me opening up that that, that, that the Sun Times and see it four and all. Yeah. Believe me. <laughs> and I feel good. So those are my four picks. All right. Those are my four picks. I got the the Jaguars, the Panthers, the Cowboys, and the Saints. All right, fellas, that was Mike's predictions. You got it. I mean. We'll see what happens. Mike's been on a little roll here and there. We'll see what he does about, uh, you know, them Bears and, and that pick. And then uh, pay attention because coming close to this playoff time and uh, this dude that's been this hot will just keep firing away with these predictions and maybe can walk you into walk you into a big Super Bowl win through uh, whoever he's, you know, whoever makes it there and whoever gets it, man. Um, gentlemen, that's, that's about a wrap. I mean – we got a couple of other things we can touch on. We want to touch on this John Fox thing. Um, if anybody wants to take take that away and talk about that, feel free, man. Uh, otherwise, yeah, he just put... he shouldn't be talking, man. He shouldn't be talking about the Bears. You you were here. You didn't do shit. I you know uh, on Twitter there was a little bit de little debate yesterday. Why are we still talking about this fucking guy? He's gone. He didn't do shit while he was here. Uh, it's just it is what it is. You know, for him to come out and, and not give credit where it's due to Mitch and to Nagy and Vic and, this, you know, uh, just just go away, man. ESPN just continues to be trash and uh, he just adds to that trash pile. And I, I got a quick rapid fire question for AA. Hey, hey, John Fox. Garbage. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, man, this guy's spending the McCaskey's money and yeah. he's getting paid. I mean, that's just shut your mouth, old man. Like, like seriously, shut your your scratchy voice, stupid ass mouth. Like, hey, hey, keep, keep, easy keep, on the scratchy voice stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> After that last game, I'm sounding like you. Yo, but <laughs> yo, but I mean, shut your mouth, John Fox. Keep the bears out of your fucking mouth. Don't talk uh, at all. Like, you had your chance, and and yeah, nobody got you, Khalil Mack. But you know, you had your shot. I mean, at the end of the day, I think John Fox is an important part of why we're here where we are. I don't think I don't think we get to this point without the John Fox Fox uh, piece of the narrative, the story. But I mean, at the end of the day, he's getting paid to make comments. So it's not shocking that he made comments. And, you know, it's also not shocking that a bunch of weird ass passive aggressive bullshit came out of his mouth because that's all that happened when he was the coach. So, I mean, yep. you know, hey, but, so, yeah. But, I'll close out. I'll close out this. I'll close out this John Fox thing, man. I think uh, John Fox has shown the reason for his demise. Uh, the same thing that he's shown every year. He's not a person who's able to give credit where credit's due. He's not able to fucking commend a young kid who comes in and kicks fucking ass or give that dude any credit. Like it's like it's going to be a bad thing. Uh, he's shown it throughout his career. It's been his fucking coaching demise and now he's showing it by shitting on Nagy and and not giving him credit where it's due um and that's why you're no longer a head coach because you don't know 
you don't know how to fucking credit people and and give them what they deserve. Um, can, I, can I give Fox a party shot real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Garbage. Garbage. Nobody's, calling, nobody's calling Fox for shit. Nobody's calling him to be a consultant. Nobody's calling him to 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 do shit except for sit there and and run his mouth. Which I don't even know why they're doing that because because he's not good at that. I mean, who the hell wants to ESPN? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it. Fox's 60 seconds is up. Fuck that bitch. All right, Garbage. here we go. Garbage. Let's get into any last words or shout outs. I'm going to kick this thing around the room. Let you guys get in here. You know, shout out whoever you want. Um, let's start this thing with AA. AA, what you got, man? Any shout outs or parting words? Yeah, man. Shout out to everybody that was here this weekend. Um, Phil, uh, Phil's wife, Steph, the Sandlins, Heather and Chris, uh, Georgie, who set up that tailgate, Bragg, yeah. who's just, I mean, Bragg's is is the damn mayor. That's all. I hope everybody gets to meet Bragg's. If you haven't met Bragg's, you got to meet him. You got to, you know, got to go to, you got to go to camp and, and, and hang out with Bragg's, you know? I mean, this whole journey of this season started with me uh, being inspired to go down to training camp because of Bragg's. You know, and I mean, that guy, shout out to him. Shout out to Michael Halitech, um, you know, for for, uh, you know, giving the ticket to Bobby Bombs and, yeah. you know, shout out to to the fans of, of, of this team who just brought it. Um, and, you know, just it was it was unreal. It was like it, it was just this culmination of this whole journey this you know this crazy bears barroom journey that i've been on and with this team and, and we love this team and we love this each other and we love this crew and and we're just gonna keep it rolling man and it, and it was cool you know shout out to everybody that came out and represented there was so much good time so much good vibes and you know we're just gonna keep doing it man we're just gonna keep stacking the 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 wins and the good times and the feelings and the vibes and and this train don't stop Damn straight. Gaines, what you got? Any shout outs, parting words, man? Um, shout out, man, to shout out for starting first with Ryan Pace and the front office and the, the whole British organization, man. Just shout them out because finally the nation sees what us here on Tailgate have been saying and have been talking about also here on Bears Barroom. Have, I'm just glad everyone else sees what we see. And that honestly, I feel like I don't even talk so much anymore because I just feel, I just feel finally it's out there. What we have faith in, everybody else needed to see, to believe. And But I just feel like it's just the beginning, guys. I honestly feel like we're going to win the Super Bowl this year. And I just feel like it's in, it, it's in, the, it's in the making, it's in the pudding. But we, have the right, we have the right character the guys to do it. And I just want to shout out the pace for the, for the vision and the leadership that that is seen. When you see, when we talk about team camaraderie and everything you guys are talking about, believing each other. I mean, Bobby, you know, Corman up, Marine down. I mean, dog. That's right. That brotherhood, that stuff is. There's a reason why NFL players respect the military so much because they understand when you're on the field of battle. Is that the other field of battle is really life and death. And yeah. so, but this is this man. We really have something special here, guys. And it's really, really awesome to see the appreciation finally start to take place. So Keem Hicks finally getting into the Pro Bowl. Shout out to the Dream Man. And then and so people that's just fi- that's just finally getting their due. And then so Mitch Trubisky. People that I mean, everybody was mad at us when we when we gave away. We the only team that didn't give away a first round pick to get their quarterback. Everyone else, all those other teams that got those other quarterbacks, give up a first round pick to do that. That's why I want to shout out Ryan Pace and the leadership that we that we have. I mean, shout out to everybody on the bar room, guys. It's been it has been a fun season, and we just getting started. It, it's two weeks left in the regular season, cause we got playoff football coming, baby, and the and the tailgate is gonna be here. And I'm just excited to be here with you guys and my bros, man. Let's go, man. Tomorrow we're going to blast off. Hell yeah, man. Air Jer coming at you, man. What you got? Any shout outs, parting words? Well, I want to shout you guys out for just, I'm glad that we're all finally back together. It's been a long, treacherous journey, but here we are. We're two <laughs> games away. We're two games away from the playoffs. Playoffs? The playoffs. Playoffs? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, here we are, and opportunities here. I want to wish everybody out there a Merry Christmas. This will be the last show till Christmas, so Merry Christmas to y'all, and uh, much love, and let's get that dub. Damn straight. B. Diddy, what you got, man? Any shout-outs, parting words? 
Hey, thanks, thanks to the Barflies for for sticking with us through this season. We had a lot of fun doing this, man. Just kicking Chicago Bears talk with my boys. And uh, happy holidays, to everyone. And let's go out and get this W. Nice, Badgley, Mr. Badge. What you got, man? Yo, shout out to the whole barroom crew, man. Uh, everybody brings it every episode, every show. Shout out to you, my boys, man. Like this has been uh, a dream come true for me, and being able to do this with you guys, man, is is the dopest thing. I, uh, you know, uh, talking Bears football that I get to do. So I uh, appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. You know, whatever you celebrate, bar flies, wherever you are. We appreciate you hanging with us. Merry Christmas to my family, my wife, my daughter, my parents, my sister, her husband, and and everybody else. I hope everybody enjoyed the show. Damn straight. All right, guys, I got a little I got a little rundown here on shout outs. Let me start with uh, with Aldo and Donna for their generosity and kindness. Uh, they offered to help us, you know, my family out with anything during these last few months and times of need. And they followed up with care packages and gift cards, man. And uh, just some truly amazing, kind people. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Halitech, Mike, Michael, thank you very much, man. Uh, you know, not only the jingle thing and then and then coming down there and your generosity there and, and uh, basically just paying for my, uh, the whole weekend for me, man. Um, I much appreciated. Thank you very much, dude. It was a great time sitting with you. Uh, can't wait to do it again. Um, just felt, you know, real, like just a great game, man. And uh, and and hanging out together, watching it. It's very memorable. Uh, Phil, Steph, Greg, Chris, Heather, the Sandlands. Pablo, Georgie, fucking Trey Busy, uh, you know, everybody who came out on Saturday night and hung out, you know, all the bar flies, Goon was there, Tooch was there, Chris, uh, Contreras was there, Joe Moscone, um, Frank was there, Justin, shit, I mean, even the kid from LA that just came in off the street and started singing with us and going, man, um, the ladies that were just there to eat and they came back and started hanging out with us and jumped in dancing to steak and whiskey and had no fucking clue what was coming um, <laughs> they they heard the second verse that and they were like oh jesus but they just kept on dancing uh shout out to you know aa thanks for holding all that man and doing it over there at bills it was great dude great venue great place to just hang out with everybody easy parking easy to get to um just you're not like trapped in the city when you get there dude it was just a great time with all you guys uh shout out to adrian amos on that badge of honor um you know in the the chat back and forth yesterday with you and talking about your charity and all that man uh it's greatly appreciated um, just a humble dude who uh you know he makes time for fans and and uh just just bullshitting back and forth with them uh really really means something man uh barflies thank you guys for joining us this morning we look forward to bringing you the pregame and now the playoff coverage this year hearing from you guys out there make sure you follow bears barroom for all your football coverage get over to the swag shop check out the gear i mean christmas is already here if you haven't ordered yet whatever just tell them it's in the mail and order now and you know you might be a little late on your christmas shit but check out the gear hook yourself up hook your friends up there's new stuff hitting the market all the time over there uh some new swag new shirts i mean everything's coming out over there check out bears on tap sunday night uh after the game aldo and danny are going to be bringing it then you got uh bears bears hour live on monday with uh kaplan coming back to you know a little round two with him and phil I'm sure there's going to be some Jordan Howard talk. You got fantasy football goon. They're going to be wrapping up like one hell of a season for those guys, you know, and, and the goon and the tooch and, and games over there just, you know, on the show, just killing it, man. Um, that that'll be wrapping up. As all of you know, this is championship week for fantasy football. Uh, just when you think, you know, that that's it. You got John Buffon coming in, man. And Buffon's kicking fucking walls down and, and hyping up your week, man. Buffon and then Trey Busy wraps this thing up with, with, you know, let's talk it out on Thursdays. And then Mike brings the end of the week paycheck together for all of us with a little Mike North advantage. Um, I mean, dude, there's stuff to read. There's articles. Cars Keys is out there. You know, a little, little little quick uh, hits that you can get from cars, you know, maybe a little 30 minute piece. Listen to, um, dude, if you guys ain't following yet, get over to BBR.com. Check it out. Follow on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, subscribe, retweet, share, uh, share everything you get. I mean, 
that we wouldn't be able to do any of this without you know without the godfather and and honestly without the sponsors i mean the godfather kills it but he's he's bringing in people daily uh the barfly tailgate show and all the bears farm radio network shows are brought to you by verdoliac law group visit verdoliac.com give them a call explain you know explain to them what's going what's happening if you're injured at work or hurt at work make sure you get over there to verdoliac.com um and i'm sure they can help you with whatever you need i mean just being home last weekend man you see verdoliac billboards everywhere uh specifically i seen that one on 87 the southwest highway there by the cemetery um driving past it i was like oh look at that because i'm not in chicago all the time but but whatever they got verdoliac out there don't forget to visit tick splits that's blitz with a z for all your sporting needs I mean, they joined the bar room. They're hooking bar flies up. I'm, I'm just, you know, obvious it happened to me. Uh, if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, get in there, man. They're there. Playoff tickets are coming out. If you're going to go and, you know, do this air raid siren and pump up this crowd in the Bears game, get over there, visit Tick Splits, and, and check it out. This show will be on your, uh, you know, pod stream, YouTube, all that. Make sure you get over there. Check out Tape Doesn't Lie with Draft Dr. Phil. There's all kinds of stuff on YouTube for you guys to look at, man. Um, no reason you should go without Bears news and the bar room brings it all to you. Uh, once again, you know, Merry Christmas, bar room. Merry Christmas from the bar room. Merry Christmas, bar flies. Merry Christmas to all you guys, man. Hope you enjoy the holiday season with your family. Uh, you know, and we'll, we'll be back at you next week with a week 17, a hopeful uh, chance to go ahead and secure that first round by. Uh, thanks again for joining us this morning. You guys bring it every week. Fellas, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I know we got the, you know, the later game, so whatever. Find something to watch in the morning. Otherwise, let's get out there. You know, hopefully you guys lock up your, your shit, get your fantasy win, get that cash. And, you know, as we do every week, bear down. Bear down. Bear down. Bear down.